Good morning. 7 o'clock right on the nose, ladies and gentlemen. A little news, a little information. Anything in the news that's good you've seen? Yeah. Um, I saw the Teacher of the Year they were talking about at Star Trib um, from St. Paul, and they wrote a, a whole write-up on him, and it's pretty cool. Teacher of the Year? Yeah. I put it in Tom's News Stories. Oh, you did? Yes, sir. Should I track it down? Yeah, I think you'd like it. It's nice, uh, I think, a good one. No, wait a minute. It's not as good as man quit job to live in van and find Loch Ness Monster. I like that one, too. Well, you put that in there, so that's good. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you guys have any teachers that changed your life? Yeah, for the worse. Yeah, I hear you. I, at Brown, I remember Mike Cronforst I liked a lot. Oh, he was a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was a very nice guy. Oh, well, yeah, I would agree with you. Brown, there were good teachers there. Yeah, yeah. and... Like, I, I just really liked him, and he was just, he gave a lot of good advice, and, um, and I, had, I had good teachers. I just, I don't know how in it I was in high school to have my life affected mm -hmm. uh, by anybody. Well, did you learn anything? I hope so. Well, Maybe. so apparently not. In <laughs> other words, you didn't. I hope, hope so. so. You learned nothing. Is that the plan there, ladies and gentlemen? I uh, should check on the weather, because it, it's looking pretty good. Mixed sun and clouds today, warm but not humid, with a high of 87. So, yeah, very pleasant day coming up. Wednesday, hot and sunny, not too humid again, with a high of 88. Thursday, hot and mostly sunny. They're throwing in not very humid three days in a row. That's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. To point out that it's not going to be humid for today, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, a possible thunderstorm on Friday. Of course there is, because it's the weekend. Thunderstorms on Friday, possible scattered thunderstorms on Saturday. But Sunday, mostly sunny and warm with a high of 86. Yeah, the weather's looking really good. Look, I mean, these, these predictions past about three days don't matter anyway, do they? Yeah, that's very true. I mean, it's so basically we're talking uh, very nice today, tomorrow, and Thursday. It is sunny and 61 right now, so that's good. Uh, teacher of the Year, meet the Teacher of the Year who makes math matter to his St. Paul students. Uh, Michael Houston. I'm going back to Houston. Come on, sing along. Uh, Houston. Houston. Thank you. Uh, in early May, uh, St. Paul Harding senior high school math teacher Michael Houston was named Minnesota Teacher of the Year. Getting there, he admits, was a winding road. It was a winding road. Uh, born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, Houston came to Minnesota to play football as a walk-on for the Gophers. He later transferred to Concordia University in St. Paul where a math professor inspired him to become a math teacher. Now it's Houston doing the inspiring. I, on St. Paul, recently met with Houston to talk about how he works, uh, he's worked to make uh, connections with his kids over a 19-year career at Eastside High School, which saw a tragedy this year when a student was stabbed to death in February. Oh, Jesus. See, isn't that sad in the world right now? This is a great story about a great guy, and somebody <laughs> still gets killed. Jesus, oh that's God. sad. God. Uh, Mr. Houston, I'm sorry that somebody got killed right in the middle of your <laughs> story. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. And I'm not laughing at that. It's a frustration thing. Oh, it's just so jarring. So I understand the oh. anxious kind of giggle feel of, yeah, that, that was, what a twist. Well, it's just, it's, uh, it's sad. There's one quote I want to read here. What brought you to Minnesota? I needed to get away. A couple of my best friends, they received full ride scholarships to play football, one to Michigan and one to Iowa. As friends, we competed all the time in sports and football particularly, so they got their full ride scholarships and they were going to leave and I was left behind, so I decided to go to Minnesota. So that's very good. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Michael Houston, what the hell's the number again? 952-600-2575. You nailed it. Houston, get off your ass and call in. Let's go. We'll see if you're any good at calling in. What do you say? He's a math teacher, so he could put numbers together. Yeah, but he'll probably add up our phone number or something. Could be. So, yeah, 952-600-2575, Michael Houston. Uh, if you want to call in, we congratulate you in public. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, I, um, I was a big fan of math in school. Do you guys like Most people either love it or hate it. I like math because it's consistent. It is consistent. Well, if you do it right, I suppose. Right. I've seen some people that are not very good at it, I'll tell you that, um, unfortunately. I hated it. My daughter is just such a whiz at it, and it just it almost kind of drives me crazy that she's so good with right. it. Yeah, because I just, I look at it, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. You, you show me a piece of video, and I'm like, I know exactly what to do with it, but you show me a math equation, and I'm like, I tapped out with her homework at, like, grade four. Isn't was, that hard? And then do, are they doing the, I don't want to call it new math, but. Is that where they're doing the ad? You divide and add differently? I got into an argument in a caribou coffee because, you know, the question of the day where you get to save 10 cents if yeah, you yeah. get it right. Yeah. It was something like, what is 
3 plus 4 divided by 12 multiplied by 15. And I was like, well, the answer is 36. And the lady's like, it's not. It's actually 57. I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, and they're like, no, you got to do new math. I was like, well, there's no new math. It's math. There's no well, new the answers are supposed to be the same. Yeah. But no, but that was I. But and for some reason, I got it wrong. <laughs> so I didn't save 10 cents. Oh, God, I could have gone to an investment. Mm -hmm. So what is new math anyway? It's really um, just the way that they're getting things. It's they look at things in bunches of 10 and then use it. It's. It's just a different way of looking at numbers. It means once they have it memorized, they can do it pretty quickly mm -hmm. in their heads. Um, you can do that anyway, can't you? Yeah, some of it. But, um, like, I've always I always liked math. Um, but when you start doing it in new math, you just have to, like, trust their process. Like, I, my, when I nannied, I would have my sheet of paper and Brookie would have hers. And we'd get to the same thing, just in a different way. We got new math and same old dumb people. So two plus two equals four is different now. I think it's or is that more... just addition rather than math. <laughs> I think you you know what? It's probably just rebranding math. That's all it is. Yeah. It's like this is our idea now. That's what that yep, is. You there know. you go. Hey, as long as you can add things up and get to the right number, who gives a rat's ass how you do it? Good for you. Yeah, it's fun when you watch a kid though. When you uh, Tom, you probably remember when your kiddos were learning math and you see it connect. It's fun to watch that happen, and you go, okay, yeah. Andy didn't grow up around you, did he? No, I didn't. I, mean, I didn't meet Andy until I met. I knew you for a long time. I swear to God, in the hospital, as soon as he came out, he looked at me and said, "Dad, you should get better at math." I just, <laughs> he is unbelievably good at math. Did you have to teach um, Alex math and it or anything? Well, we went through it. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know, we went. Through, no, no, that's not against against Alex. But I'm just saying, I left it to the teachers to do a good job. Because, like, people, it's so funny because people will have traumatic experiences with their parents at the table doing no, math. No, we didn't do that. No, we didn't do any of that stuff. No. I think Catherine went through it with, with them all. Well, yeah, I mean, I was gone all the time anyway, so it, it kind of had, had to go that way. But that is true. Hey, you want to do old math? You want to do new? You see, all of these things that people like to divide, God, we are, we're, you have math, but we have better math. It's like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I used to get pissed off at stuff like that, and now it's like, it's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Your math is just magnificent. Now go over there, right? Yep. Leave me alone. Get away from me, you. I'm trying to uh, avoid something that, that it doesn't make me sad. Well, it does make me sad, but I'm not depressed over it or anything. I've always liked this guy. I've had him on the, not this show, but we had him on the morning show several times. Pat Sajak is retiring from the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I love him. Yeah, he's great. He's the great, you know, he's a very smart guy. Oh, yeah. He's a really smart guy. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry to see that because I, I don't catch, you know, the one thing that will happen now because it was just uh, within the last year, the last several times I watched Wheel of Fortune was with my father-in-law, Don, who passed away. So I'll always have that memory of my, grand, my uh, wife's father, sitting there going through Wheel of Fortune, guessing what it is at 93 <laughs> years old, which was fantastic. <laughs> so it's a great memory. Now, like I said, Vanna White, Pat Sajak, the whole shoot match. I always loved that show. You guys watch that show? Oh, yeah. It's so good. It's terrific. It really is. And you can learn things, so that's a good deal. Yeah, it's pretty fun to watch. I wonder, who would you think would be a good replacement for Pat? Ooh, that's a tough call I right there. I know. Because it didn't work out on the other one, uh, Alex Trebek's show. Oh, God, that was a mess. I heard it was, I didn't even watch it, but I heard it was dreadful. Well, they still have Jeopardy rolling, right? I mean, they yeah. still have, yeah. Yeah. Maya Mbialik, was that was her but name? But getting to that was just Yeah, because Ken Jennings chaos. was also the mm -hmm. uh, host for a while there, yeah. And mm -hmm. then they had, what was it, who, what? Football player was it Aaron Rodgers or who? Oh God! Was that, who That's was, all we need. Who there was a I don't know a football player that was that was yeah was Aaron Rodgers did very well on Jeopardy. I think he won did like he? two or three, three uh, two or three no, rounds. No, but I mean he hosted for oh, a little bit. Oh, he did host. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, oh, I didn't yeah. Know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that he hosted. And that was kind of a bridge between they didn't know what to do after Ken Jennings was out, and it was just like it was a lot of little chaos here uh, around. 
Yeah, that whole thing. Well, then they had the executive producer of the show host for about seven shows, and then some information came out about yeah. him, and he was like, you know what? I'm just going to step back into my office. I will, I'll be there if you guys need me. They're like, oh, by the way, you're very fired. Yeah. <laughs> so why did they fire him? I can't even remember why. Like a Me Too kind of thing. That There was some, like, you know, hostile work environment sort of accusations made, and he was like, you know what? I, I, I mean, how do you spend... 27 years with the same person and it never comes out then all of a sudden you get yourself right. into the hot seat right and now all of a sudden this information comes out it's like i don't know i, I read some of that stuff and just go well was it was it a work hostile work environment because i don't know if you guys have ever worked on a construction site that's a hostile work environment yeah. yep. when you're putting on a game show you know and recording three at a crack and there's craft services you're doing fine there you have it so yeah i i I don't know why. I suppose maybe because Don wasn't around any longer. I haven't watched Wheel of Fortune in several months now, but hopefully it's still a good show. And the other one, uh, what the hell is the other one we were talking about? Jeopardy. Again? Jeopardy, yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to love that show. Alex Trebek was terrific on there. Yeah. But um, you could actually learn things by watching shows like that, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people want to learn, though. You know what, though, with Jeopardy, I don't know what it is, and I, I know well, like my learning style is not... I can't retain it that way it, when you just watch a bunch of questions and the answers come up quickly, like come and go. Like that does not stick with me at all. You know, off the air, one of the things that those guys got so pissed off about, and we didn't, they wouldn't talk about it on the air, but I think it's on the Internet, I think. But it's phony. There was a, a puzzle is the puzzle on Wheel of Fortune or is it on the other one? I can't remember. Wheel of Fortune is the one you fill in the blank puzzle yeah. kind of the, thing. The puzzle. Okay, puzzle. good. Yeah. So it was Wheel of Fortune. Uh, the word up there was C-L-A-M-I-G-G-E-R. Okay? So clam digger? Clam digger. Okay. Only they tried to claim the guy said the big N. Whoa, really? Whoa. That's complete and utter bullshit. I wow. mean, there's no way that's true. Yeah, there's actually video of it and everything. I don't think I've ever seen that yeah, one. Yeah, it was yes. really a thrill for her. Wow. Well, there's Pat Zajac. That South Park episode. Did you ever see that where... I believe so. It's I Wheel of South Fortune Park. and oh, he yeah, thinks yeah, yeah. he knows the answer and it's an inappropriate word and they keep kind of goading him, but it's absolutely not that and mm -hmm. so then he screams it out and they're like whoa how, yeah. how long ago was that it was well i'm sure they reflect real life all the time so it could have been around that time yeah well that's what i'm thinking is maybe the other guy was inspired by them or they were inspired by the other guy sure i guess yeah but did any would, would anybody believe, yeah we're gonna put that on national television <laughs> the big end that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do it's gonna be and plus it ties directly to clam anyway mm-hmm like what? Yeah. There's also that uh, that that was it the newlywed game. Okay, Jill. Yeah. Where is the craziest place you've ever had sex? She's like in the butt, Bob. That's what? real though. That's, that's super funny. So what's funny is that's real. There's yep. a lot of people who play that off like they wrote that joke. Oh really? Somebody had told me that. Like an, an older comedian was like, oh, I wrote God. that joke a long time ago. Before they took it, they took it from me and stole it. I was like, I think that's a real moment because that woman's it face is. is very, very red. Well, yep. you know, they could both be true. It's not like it's that creative of a no, joke. No, you're right. Yeah. And this woman could totally have misunderstood them. Yeah. She seems so sincere. <laughs> I cannot picture Catherine saying that. I got to be very honest with you. Not happening. No. <laughs> Catherine not a... is funny, though. I could see her saying it in the sense of it being a big joke. Not a Catherine deal to be doing that stuff. Uh, it's the end of an era, ladies and gentlemen. 76 year old Pat Sajak is retiring as a host of Wheel of Fortune, the 41st season. <laughs> 41 Man. season. That's insane. Holy God. I love that show, though. To this day, I do. The 41st season that starts in September will be its last. But he'll be sticking around as a consultant for three years after that. So in other words, they're going to pay him a big uh, goodbye present mm -hmm. and pretend that he's still working. Uh, he says, quote, it's been a wonderful ride, and I'll have more to say in the coming months. Many thanks to you all. If nothing else, I'll uh, keep the clickbait sites busy. Pat said the uh, most, oh, Pat's been the most syndicated version, uh, the host of the most syndicated version since 1983. That is amazing to me. The whole 40 years, 41 years. There's no word on who will replace him. Um, well, you remember that Chuck Woolery was, of course, the original host, of the original version of Wheel of Fortune, and he left in 1981. Wow, I did not know that. I do remember that, actually. Huh. 
I was a teenage boy, ladies and gentlemen. That's not. That's a lie. That was not. <laughs> um, yeah, he was. I, I remember him most in that show. I, I used to like him. What, what's the one when he used to go? We'll be back in two and two. Remember and that? that was a love connection. Love connection. Yeah. That's exactly. We'll be right back in two and two. Yeah. Two and and he do that two and two. Oh, <laughs> really? Will we? Ch- I heard he was a great guy, but never met. I talked to him on the phone uh, on the show once, but I never met him. Anybody you ever run across him? Mm-mm. No, but everybody who I know who has had interactions with him say he was just the best. Yep. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. I've heard the same thing. Same story. No question about it. But Pat Sajak, I've loved watching you on the show. He did such a great job. He and Vanna White worked together very, very well. Love that show, Wheel of Fortune. I haven't seen it now in a few months, though, so I better get after it. Yeah. But I think I'm like that in that if I was watching it with Don and then all of a sudden Don dies, I do have to stay away from stuff for a while because of that. Take a little break. Isn't that mm-hmm. weird? Is that weird? No, even emotional attachment to thing. I, yeah, I, I we're very yeah. thankful for people that feel that way about stuff in entertainment. Well, um, I'm never going to do it for you. Forget it. You're out of the mix. Uh, obviously, you've never probably gone out of your way to watch or listen to any of my stuff. Is it, you know, Barbie and all that stuff. I'm just not into it like you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, somebody wrote in that they thought that Pat Sajak or Sajak's daughter, May, Maggie Sajak, I think she's filling in for Vanna once in a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, you know um, what? I've seen her. You're right. But yeah, they were saying she'd be a good uh, replacement. Works for me. We got to take a break. Be right back in a couple of minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Now at the Lodge in Miller Marine. Um, now at the Lodge in Miller Marine, it's Tom Bernard for the uh, Power Lodge and the world's largest Bennington pontoon dealer, Miller Marine in St. Cloud. Temperatures are up, prices are down. We just hit 88 degrees, so Miller Marine and Power Lodge are offering hot 88 summer deals for the next two weeks only. Get a Bennington pontoon at 28888 And as a bonus, the first eight pontoons come with a trailer for 1888 Finance it all for just $288 a month. You want something larger than get a tri-tune starting at $43,888 or just $488 a month. With over 300 pontoons in stock, they've got what you need at the world's largest Bennington dealer, Miller Marine and Power Lodge. Payment terms and credits are limited. Uh, Credit limits, excuse me, are subject to credit approval. You know that, though, right? Mm. Well, now you do anyway. So come on. It's time to get serious about your throttle therapy and this two-week deal until June 17th. Check selection at PowerLodge.com and MillerMarine.com. Hot 88 summer deals with Bennington pontoons are now at the Lodge and Miller Marine. Do you ever Google yourself? Are you happy with what you find? Or is it cringy? Are you a business owner or on your company's marketing team? How do you feel when you Google your own place? What do you see? A non-updated social media page you don't even remember making? Ads for your competitors? Hubbard Interactive can help. They're a Google Premier Partner, so they can use search engine optimization to get your click results higher. They've got a photo and video department to make your business look sharp, plus social media, influencer marketing, podcasting, and more. All the things that will make you a lot happier next time you Google yourself. Here's a Google search that you'll find rewarding. Hubbard Interactive. You can see all the marketing tools they've used on hundreds of successful businesses, including an extensive gallery of the great work they could help your venture with. HubbardInteractive.com. Building campaigns that connect. When you need someone to listen, a lawyer you know and trust. If you've never been in an auto accident, it's hard to know what to expect from the insurance adjuster. Here are some tips. One, if they taught you about whether or not you should hire a lawyer, it's a good sign that you probably should. Two, it's illegal for them to give you any legal advice. They aren't lawyers and they aren't licensed to practice law. Three, if they tell you that everyone involved in the accident is at fault, they're wrong. This comes from the belief that you're at fault for just being on the road. That's nonsense and not supported by any law. Finally, remember that friendly adjusters are often just gaining information. They want you to do most of the talking so they can file their report. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. A little news, a little information. I just saw this headline. I have no idea what it means because it makes no sense to me. So maybe you guys can figure it out. The jobs women consider sexy and the ones men consider sexy. What job would be sexy? Hmm. Probably like a fireman. Isn't that sexy? Yeah. Well, I suppose a lot of, yeah, women are attracted to firefighters, aren't they? I don't like any of that. Like, I don't want inconsistent 
hours. I think it's hot when Justin gets done with work at 4 p.m. Like, that's hot to me. What does and, he like, do for good a health. He works uh, at General Mills. Doing what? He works in... He's an IO psychologist, so it's the placement of upper management. Oh, so he does nothing. Oh, of course, he does nothing. Well, it's typical. Typical. I, yeah, typical. Um, so he does placement for upper management. Yeah, so he does these uh, like tests that people have to come in, and then where you can hire, or where you can't hire. Like they, it's, it's, it's like cosmopolitan quizzes. For for high echelon jobs. It's so confusing. Oh, you have to take a quiz to work there? Pretty much. I guess I An won't be working at GM. They call it an assessment. <laughs> An assessment? Yes. You know, I used to go there all the time because I knew the, the CEO of General Mills. Beautiful campus. Oh, it is. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Plus, Steve put my picture on the Wheaties box. Ooh, oh. big... And you know, some people actually believe that's real. That they took a picture of me out on the golf course oh. and put it on a Wheaties box. Like, I thought it was going to be like no. you palming a basketball because you can hold one probably. You can probably hold two in your yeah. hands. Um, yeah, no, I uh, he he technically works in HR. We'll just say HR, General Mills. But, um, yeah, I love his job because they're good about if Go goes sick, he has got consistent hours. Like, I don't want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. I don't want him to be, i got to go at 4 a.m. to run out to a fire. I appreciate those people, but, like, not my version of sexy. I don't know that sexy would ever came up in this. Yeah, you said what? what no, forget it. You're out. It was, like, the original question. I know it was the original question. <laughs> you realized question. it halfway through no, it. No, I just. And you went, ah. <laughs> I'm getting messages as we speak. How dare they? Um, in any case, the sex experts, I love that. How do you qualify as a sex expert? Yeah, Excuse, explain that to me, please. I just know that I do not qualify me as either. a sex expert. Not me either. Oh, wait a minute. They're sex experts because they work at lovehoney.com. So there you go. Must be nice. The sex experts at Love Honey. I'll tell you, you know, can I cash my paycheck here? Really? Where's Oh, it's from Love Honey? No. <laughs> no. No, you cannot. Your money's your no money. good and <laughs> sticky. No. Get out. Uh, recently conducted several surveys asking men and women which professions they consider the most sexually attractive, and some of the results will surprise you. Now, I have not seen any of these. What is the percentage of chance that radio's in there or oh, podcasting? So low. Zero. Mm -hmm. No, we are not a sexy no. group of people. Our profession is not cool. Nope. Once you see it in action, you go, that's not that sexy. It's a lot more boring than I thought it'd be. <laughs> I know? don't know how many times people would come into every any station I've ever been on and go, huh, this is underwhelming. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> it, and the people in it are even more underwhelming. That's the best way to put it. True that. Uh, the top ten sexiest professions, uh, according to women, are... Lawyer? <laughs> what? Okay. I'm thinking of two lawyers right now, and neither one of them is very sexy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm going to get a call All at right. about 10.01 this morning. I can guarantee you that. Lawyer? Farmer? <laughs> you consider farmers to be sexy? No. I mean, not the... Uh, I don't. I can't say... My, my whole family, my uncles, all those people yeah. uh, on Justin's side... Are all farmers, and I don't walk around going, damn. Yeah, look at you in your overalls, boy. Mm. Damn. Where did he grow up again? Uh, Bemidji. Uh, right Bemidji, next to okay. Bemidji. It's this little town called uh, named Shevlin. Has he ever adjusted any temperatures over 35? What, what do you mean? You ever been in Bemidji? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Does it ever get over 40 there? No, no. I mean, Jesus, it's cold. It, yeah. Over there. yeah, it's freezing. Man. Absolutely. I used to drive over there from. Uh, we get a bunch of friends when I was working at KNOX in, in Grand Forks. So we'd drive over to Bemidji once in a while to meet people. Yeah. It was like, holy crap. Remember Joe Folger? Mm -mm. He was working at KTRF in Thief River Falls at oh. the time. I think he worked at KTWB later. Okay. I think that's where he was. Really nice guy. But one of the great things about that is, and I won't say who it was, but you would know this person because he worked at KTWB too. He was driving, took his hands off the wheel to look for something. We went right in the ditch. <gasps> And I said, do not take your foot off the accelerator because otherwise you're going to be stuck here forever. And he just guided it along and pulled right back up out of the ditch. It was really weird. That is both terrifying and oh, impressive at the was, end. It was, yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. It was terrifying and then it was impressive. And then you're just back on the road and you're both breathing heavy and you're like, okay, do we talk about this or? The one plus, hmm. he was driving, but I wasn't. So I had a drink. Yeah, you're <laughs> shaking hands. Oh, Jesus. Oh! It was amazing. Because he's like, yeah, so anyway, I'm like, 
boom, right in the ditch. Oh, my God. We're very lucky there wasn't any water in that ditch because we'd have never gotten out of there then. Okay, so here's the deal. We're asking men and women which professions they consider the 10 most sexually attractive. We already went through lawyer and farmer, electrician. I mean, I will say this. I know somebody who's married to an electrician, and that guy is, A, very sexy, and B, super handy. Like, mm-hmm. he fixes everything. Just randomly. He was at our house. He's like, you want me to tighten it? Yep. That's pretty, pretty pretty handy. Yeah, but if you were her, wouldn't you call him and leave a message? Make sure he didn't answer the phone. Make yeah. sure he wasn't home. Okay. Call and leave a message back in the old days. Just on his cell phone now, obviously. I'm sorry, Bill, but there's just no spark. And hang up. <laughs> what do you think? It's Julia's husband, so maybe we should do that from Lori and Julia. <laughs> yeah, there you hey, go. Hey, Julia. Okay. Yeah, she listens all the time, so yeah, just go no ahead spark. and do that. There's no spark. Yeah. She's not li- Again, 952-600-2575. Julia calling. Get off your ass. I don't know if she's up yet. What do you mean? It's 730 for I worked, Christ's sake. I worked for her yesterday. So she had oh, did a, you? Yeah. So she could Does have she a, ever work? Um, well, I work for both of them. So but they never work. I mean, they're always working. They're pop culture. Why they're are always. you pop culture? They're, oh, God. They're following the beat. I might vomit. Mm. I'm not no, saying I work for Lo- I work job. for Lori and Julia. And so they whoever takes off time, I get to fill in. Okay, because I do know uh, uh, Catherine really likes that. I think it's Julia. Is that the one she knows? She knows both of them because she oh, met she them both, both at my baby shower. Yeah, she likes them apparently. They're so lovely. That's uh, nice to hear. Uh, I heard Lori one of them a pain and her in the ass, but. Lori and her husband listened last week, and Lori goes, "I think I could come on that show and hang out." Yeah, good. good I'm just luck. saying, she wa- you don't want her on. Go, lo- go lock the door. You yeah. don't want Lori on. Just in case on? she's out there. No, I, what, you, you do what you do. No, I just mean like. It would be hilarious. You guys are both very, very funny. Uh-huh. I don't know. We had Tiffany Norton fill in one day, and that did not go very Whoa, well. Whoa, so. Tiffany. And I love yeah. Tiffany. Love Tiffany. She's a great Didn't, person. But I think her and Julia are very much so simpatico. You mean Lori? Are both, well, you know what? All three of them. Have you hung out with those two cackling hens? Like they are I've, never met, <laughs> I've never met uh, Tiffany. Oh, right on. So I yeah. don't know. She's a very nice person. But my God, what she was just driven or... Popped a bolt, or I don't know what the hell happened to her. Well, these two are radio every day. It's not the same as being on this show. Oh. This is not radio. Yeah. We talked about that eight billion times. This is nothing like radio. Uh, you guys remember it. yesterday when we were talking about it? If you got to tell people you're cool, you're probably not as cool as you think you there are. There you go. If you got to tell somebody you can hang on the Tom Bernard show, you probably can't hang on the Tom Bernard show. There I'm you go. The, you know what? Fine. I don't know why I'm pushing this. They would be hilarious <laughs> on this show. Well, and they're more they, than I, welcome. No, you know what? Done. Done what? I mean, we don't have to, we don't, I, I don't, like, they don't, they're not begging to come on. I just thought they would be who hilarious. Is, who brought up any of this shit? <laughs> what What happens to your brain? Whoa. We were both talking about how nice that would be, and you go right with, I don't want to put up with, what I are like, you talking about? I like the rewriting of history that happened yeah, you sure a minute do. ago. Yeah, you it's sure impressive. Do. God, you do that every day. <laughs> every day. You know, I thought it was Tuesday, but I've decided it's Wednesday. Oh, did, really? I wish it was Friday, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I wish it was Friday, like, 2040. Same. That's what I'm thinking. Wait a minute. No, I don't. I yeah, don't 2040 want... is a little far in the yeah, future. Yeah, that's Bring way... it back. Yeah, right. 2026. Yeah. Back it up. Back it up. <laughs> back it up. <laughs> no, I, Catherine tells me they're both very, very nice, so they're more than welcome to be on the show. But I don't want you here when they are because you're a pain in the ass. Not a problem. It's all worked out in the end. All right, back to our list now. So we've got lawyer, farmer, electrician, musician. Well, see, it just blew up right in their face. I like people who make no money. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And that I, I don't know, again, I love, uh, maybe it's just because the, I just love the consistency of my husband's job. I love that. And I love that we How have benefits. How did we get back there now? Because that's what you're talking about. No, the I'm sexiness not. of it, yeah. The I, sexiness of him coming home at four. I said musician. I, I know, but the list you're talking about is what people find sexy. What? Yeah, what? So, yes. We were going lawyer, farmer, electrician, and now we're at musician. Yeah. I will so say how did this. General Mills come up again. We were talking about <laughs> that women think that musicians are sexy. And I was like, I think it is, I find it very hot that my husband comes home at the same time and makes the same amount of money every week. Yeah. 
Consistency, yeah. Musicians, though. I have a friend of mine from the 80s that was like a marginally somewhat kind of known uh, guitar player back then. And he was telling me stories that before he started making money, that when they would travel, they would go to towns and they would ask the promoter, where is the bar that has the happy hour with free food? Oh, there you go. Because that was the only meal that they would get for the day. So if uh. happy hour started at three and it was free chips and salsa, if you bought a beer, they would all go in. Everybody would buy one beer. They would milk it for all it's worth and sit there sure. for three hours Dang. and fill up on chips and salsa. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know, ladies. If that's that sounds date? sexy. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <What about> you? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Uh, paramedic comes in next. Then mechanic. Doctor is fourth. Police officer is third. I wonder if they, when do they take take this? Because cops right now are looked down upon by a lot of people, which I've never understood. I, I don't know how safe you're going to be without a police force, but I kind of like police forces. You know Same. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, builder. How is a builder sexy? Also, what a broad term. Yeah, I know. Builder, yeah. right, like exactly. Like Bob the Builder? Bob. Who specifically are we talking Bob. about? <laughs> I mean, builder's a great job. Don't get, but I'm, how, say, isn't he a builder? It's like a contractor, maybe even get more specific. Right, like builders, right. mm-hmm. what is he building? Like, is he in the sand pit, just putting castles together? Like, yeah. but you nailed number one. Number one is indeed firefighter. Sure. So that's good. Knew a lot of. I still know a lot of firefighters. They're great people. They're amazing. Cops, firefighters, all those people that keep us safe that you hate. Um, how many? We don't have a lot of full time firefighters, do we? I, mean, I think there's like two or three, I don't want to call them houses or whatever units. Fire houses. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. there's, I think there's a full-time in St. Paul in Minneapolis, but I don't think most of them are either part-time or volunteer or... What? Really? Yeah, I don't think there's... Ugh. Most people I know who wanted to be firefighters had to go to certain places because you, not, not everybody has like, this is your designated job. You're like also doing this. Yeah. A couple of guys I went to St. Anne's with uh, ended up being firefighters. Mm -hmm. One thing I will tell you about firefighters, I don't think you want to tangle with them at a bar. No. I don't know what it is about being a fire, but do they lift a lot of weight so they can carry people out of buildings and that kind of stuff? Yeah, right? Is that what they do? I feel like they're off time, too. They, like, lift weights at the firehouse. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing, like, stereotypical movie stuff. Yeah, I just want firefighters to eat chili and have Dalmatians and be super good looking. That's what I want my firefighters to be. I rolled up on the Eden Prairie uh, Firehouse, and I was my, you you can get your car seat checked. Um, And before Alex told me she'd check, I stopped by there. And this guy, it's a, it's a weird realization when you realize you're older than most firefighters. I walked in. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. like, uh, it felt like a teenager popped his head out and was like, how can I help you? And I was like, what the? Is your, who's in charge? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Probably I'm at that age where eventually most firefighters are going to be younger than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. It was just like a, where's your dad? <laughs> I want him to check my car seat. <laughs> All right, so again, according to women, it's lawyer, farmer, electrician, musician, paramedic, mechanic, doctor, police officer, builder, and firefighters, number one. Among the top ten sexiest profession, according to men, would be singer. Oh, God, men. Why why do I have to read this? Singer. Don't do this to me. Not even, they don't even get the word musician, it's just singer. Men, this is men, top ten sexiest professions, number ten is singer, Number nine is maid. <laughs> maid? That's... Hmm. What year is it, for Christ? Really? Who are you, Arnold Schwarzenegger? He, I, don't, I don't know. If you got the French maid get up with the feather duster... That's not that, how it I works. Know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, but what they're talking about is hiring some squatty Guatemalan lady to come in for $25 oh. an hour, which I get... But also very sexy. I'm telling you, there is something about sitting Here's... in your butt and watching a woman clean. Oh I know it sounds God. terrible. Oh, my God. You know what, though? Hang on. Let me go back. It's, it's both ways. To be able to sit and have somebody in your house clean when you are not having to do it is amazing. It goes for both sexes, mostly for men, but I'm just saying. Um, Kristen just hung up on us. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to, in my head, try to, like, okay, here's the thing, too. If it's sexy, or is it, is it, it's not like that person's then going to work all day and then coming home and being like, I'm going to clean, our house as well. So it's like the actualization of this profession is not, if you think it through, isn't great. Cause like, what are the chances you have a cleaner, somebody who's cleaning houses all day. And again, they're wearing sweatpants and are, you know, running around and then they come home and they go, all right, let me get the house as well, honey. 
No, I'm just saying, like, hiring somebody to do that while you just sit around. Like, uh, it's just sexy. Yeah, Ben Holson, who was a longtime radio yeah. guy from here. I don't know if you guys know him at all, but mm-hmm. Ben uh, t- told me because I was cleaning my house one Saturday. And he's like, you got just hire somebody. I'm like, I'm too cheap. And he's like, I'm telling you, for 50 bucks an hour, they come in, it's 100 bucks. It'll be the best. And I'm telling you, when I sat there and just watched TV and two people came in and completely dusted and cleaned everything in my house for two hours, it was, it was kind of hot. You stayed there? Oh, yeah. I cannot. If somebody is cleaning my house or doing anything in the house, I feel too guilty. I've got too much guilt. I have to, like, run errands while they're mm-hmm. cleaning the house. It's, yeah, that's impressive. Okay, so singer's 10, maid is 9. And by the way, men look very shallow on this list. Men do not sure. look good because of the list they came up with. Because we are. Uh, maid's number 9. Bartender is number 8. Doctor, there's a good one, number 7. Police officer, 6, so that's good. Actor, we'll take it, 5. Uh, 4 is teacher, again, tip of the cap. Secretary, which we just dropped off a little bit there. The last three are secretary, nurse, and flight attendant. Why don't you watch a little more porn? Right? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Oh, that's funny. I mean, the women had nice, solid picks like firefighter, builder, police officer, Electrician. doctor. Electrician. Electrician's yeah. in there. We get flight attendant, nurse secretary, and maid. <laughs> Jesus, man. A little more shallow, please, if you possibly can be. Um, It says here, on the flip side, being a judge ranked as the least sexy profession for both men and women, the rest of the five least sexy jobs are web developers, politicians, marketing executives, and designers. Hey, good. At least podcasting didn't even make the list. Oh, here. I I love this. There's nothing pornographic at that link, but the website could be NSFW because Love Honey sells sex toys. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to your point, there's no paycheck from Love Honey. They just get paid in butt plugs. That's, That's it. it. It's so a what bag is, of them. What is NSFW? What is not that? safe for work? They'll usually oh, say, not safe for work? don't okay. click on this NSFW. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Once again, I don't go on the internet, so I'm safe from all of that stuff. And I'm very happy that I'm safe from all that stuff. Yeah. It all works out in the end. But I don't know. It's sexy jobs. Catherine's got a sexy job. And I don't know. It's. I love my wife. Let me put it that way. You're, you think uh, podcasting sexy then? I do. Yeah, because she's a podcaster. That's exactly right. You're 100%. See, right there. We've brought home the bacon or there you something. Go. <laughs> or some damn thing. Um, yeah, I, I, that kind of depressed me because that was very depressing that men still stick to all the ones from like the 1940s. Yeah, I, there is something. It's also reliable. There's both disturbing and consistent. But it's got to go both ways for women, too. Like a flight attendant, like it's less maybe about the attractiveness and more about the, hey, I can get a free flight. Yeah, maybe. I, I get to travel with this person because I, there's a lot of male flight attendants right now. I don't know yeah. if you guys have noticed. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Yeah, it is yeah. true. Mo, definitely. Uh, this makes me very, very sad because I've interviewed this guy several times. Just a terrific guy. Loved his work. No question about it. Treat Williams was killed yesterday. Mm. You guys know Treat Williams? Mm-mm. You'd know him if you saw him. Yeah, yeah. You definitely would. He, one of my favorite lines he ever delivered, and I can't remember the name, was it True Romance? Where he calls a guy a mammy rammer. Oh. <laughs> Listen here, you mammy rammer. <laughs> what a great line. Treat Williams was killed yesterday while riding his motorcycle in Vermont. He was 71 years old. His rep says he was making a turn, and a car cut him off, cut right in front of him. Treat got his big break in 1979 in the movie version of Hair, which was based on the Broadway musical of the same name. More recently, he'd played Dr. Andrew Brown on WB's Everwood from 2002 to 2006. That was his most recent work was 17 years ago? Uh, Uh, No, he does. I'm looking at his IMDb. He was on Blue Bloods for quite a while. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Yeah, he was. On CBS, yeah. Yeah. That's a great show. I love Mm -hmm. that show. Um... His other credits include Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. That's the movie I was thinking of. Things yeah. Not, uh, yeah, Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. You ever seen that movie, Brittany? No, I haven't. No, you've seen it? So good. Phenomenal. Yes. Movie. And it was not a big hit at all. Not at all, no. Not at all, but I thought it was just, just to, Christopher Walken in that thing is the most disgusting human on earth. <laughs> you know, I, I got to bring, well, I'll bring it up at the end of the story. Uh, His other credits include Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, Heart of Dixie, and TV shows Blue Bloods, Light Shift, Chicago Fire, and Chesapeake Shores. He also appeared in several Hallmark movies and Netflix musical Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. 
Also back in 1988, he starred with Joe Piscopo in the underrated zombie buddy cop, Dead Heat, their uh, buddy cop comedy. I don't remember Dead Heat. You remember that? Uh Uh-uh. I don't remember that movie at all. Where his character's name was Roger Mortis. Instead of Rigger, it's Roger. There you go. Get it? Huh? That actually sounds fun. What? Dead Heat. Oh, Dead Heat? Yeah. Oh, oh, you're looking at it right now? Yeah, like the concept is a buddy comedy uh, with zombies. I think that sounds good. I also looked up Things to Do in Denver. That movie looks great when you're dead. It's a great movie. Mm -hmm. It's really, really, and I don't even know how I happened upon it. We just found it one day. I've probably watched it 10 times now because Christopher Walken is phenomenal in that movie. Yeah. I want you to come over here and move my right leg, put it across my left leg because he's paralyzed. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that were No, great movies. Really, really good. But Treat Williams, very, very sorry to hear that Treat Williams has died because I really enjoyed his work. Oh, man. I got to move on from that. It's making me sad, you yeah. sons of bitches. Stop making me sad, damn it. Uh, right? Yeah. It's uh, things you do in Denver when you're dead. Five different criminals face imminent death after botching a job quite badly. It's got Andy Garcia, phenomenal, Christopher Walken, and Christopher Lloyd in it, and of course, like you said, uh, um, Treat Williams. But that's a lot of big names. When you know what happens to Christopher Lloyd in that movie? You can tell me. Do you remember what happened to him in that movie? I can't remember. Okay, watch this. See these? These three went missing for some reason. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Remember that? He oh, tracked them. Oh yeah, yeah, remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and at the height of Andy Garcia's power, too, man. Oh, God, like, yes. Oh, he oh, was yeah. just such a good-looking guy. I and then, know. Oh, and then when he did When yep. a Man Loves a Woman, oh, yeah, oh, that, a... that, it makes me ball every time I think of that movie. Nicest yeah. guy in the world, too. Oh, that's great he's talented, to know. talented, handsome, wealthy. He's one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to talk to. I love that. I do, too. I really enjoy that one. They, they got it all, and uh, it doesn't really affect them. They just do it. So I don't know. What, should I take the break here or should I wait a couple of minutes? Uh, we can bring Kristen on. We got a little bit of time here, All if right. you guys well, don't mind. I just want to come on so you, you can see me tearing up because Treat Williams got killed. Yeah, I was uh, screaming it when you were like, what else is you done? I'm like, Chicago Fire. I'm like writing it, Rudy. Actually, <laughs> 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 he did, he did a whole recurring um, uh, character on Chicago Fire, but check his. Uh, check his <laughs> Chesapeake Shores was the Chesapeake. Chesapeake, Chesapeake. Shores was the last thing Didn't he did. Didn't you grow up near Mark, Chesapeake Bay? That he did. You're a disaster. Chesapeake. Why? Chesapeake. 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 Um, but you know what's really sad in this whole situation? He had tweeted just like two hours before, mm. and then all of a sudden his death was announced so he had been he lives in vermont he had been on his farm he had been like working in the field that day and just talking about how much he loves his home and then like literally two hours later he's gone one thing i will tell you you do you own a motorcycle i don't anymore Uh, yeah good move i think yeah yeah I'll, i'll tell you why yeah because people with their phones are so incredibly distracted now i would never get on a motorcycle again you're just too vulnerable yeah I mean, people are not... Wa- How many times are you driving down a freeway? People are doing 75 miles an hour, and they're looking at their lap. Yeah. Sure. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Right, right after I was driving with a guy, he was in front of me, and some lady had swerved over in his lane. And now when I say swerve, like, she was just drifting off into his lane. Oh. And he kicked her side of her, like, her driver's side. From the motorcycle? From the motorcycle, because <laughs> all of a sudden he looked over, and there's this car, and he kicked it. And it scared the hell out of her. And then she swerved back the other way and went into the other lane of traffic. Oh, and after that, I was like, you know, I, I got a six-month baby at home. It's <laughs> Maybe it's time we get rid of this thing. Yep. It's just you can't count on other people. No, you can't. Yeah. You just cannot There's count a on trend people. on TikTok that, it, like, emergency workers will come on and say, like, five things I'll never do as an emergency worker. And on every single list, it's ride a motorcycle. Yeah. You just can't, you can't trust other people enough. I, riding a motorcycle is fun, no doubt about it. Mike Sykes, a buddy of mine, uh, had a motorcycle and he used to give me rides home from school all the time. It was great riding on a motorcycle, but I just wouldn't, there's no way I'd trust people now. Too many people, first of all. Yeah, and especially Los Angeles, Kristen, when people are cutting Ooh, traffic man. like that. 
That's... 100%. And we have bike lanes now in a lot of really um, heavily driven areas. And I will tell you that if you, and I, I had this happen to me, I was going into the right lane and all of a sudden a bike list like slammed my car, like hit it with their hand. And they're like, hey, and I'm like, you're in my blind spot. I can't see you. And because, you know, the city has made all of these like <laughs> lanes of traffic, it's impossible to see the bicyclist sometimes. And I'm mm-hmm. like, it is an accident waiting to happen. And I'm sure it happens every single day. And, you know, it would have been my fault. But I was like, at the same time, I'm like, it's my blind spot. What am I supposed to do? I can't see a thing. <laughs> I have a question for all of you. But Kristen, being the host of this segment, um, what happened to that show, The Outlaws? with Christopher Walken. Have you watched the second season of that show? Mm-mm, I it's haven't. It's horrible. It got really That's political. probably why it's gone. <laughs> Is it totally gone now? Is it gone? Did they cancel it? I, I don't even know. I was like, honestly, it, it's not even on my radar. Yeah, it's, it was really good in the first year. It was funny. They would take shots at each other. It was about, it was about people, uh, forced labor for committing a crime. Yeah, let me see if, because it was Netflix. It was really uh, good. Yeah, it says the Outlaws returning to BBC for Series 3. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Because so all it just they means talked it'll, about. It'll, at a certain point, it'll, but it says there's no release date for Season 3. Good, keep it there. <laughs> we watched season, season 2, Episode 7, or excuse me, Episode 5 last night. All they talked about. The entire hour and five minutes is how racist white men are in England. That's all we talked about for the entire hour. It's like, <laughs> is that, you really think that's entertainment, huh? Okay. Well, d- was there any sort of like event around it or? No, it was just, it was just lame. It, it used to be very, very funny. It was really good. A bunch of good people in it. But now it's just, the entire world is locked up in this political crap. And it's just, ugh. Well, then you should go. I just watched the um, season two trailer. It's not coming out until August 6th on Max, but season two of Winning Time, Mm -hmm. which is like the building of the Lakers dynasty. I don't know if you saw season one. So well done. Incredible actors. Adrian Brody's in it. John C. Riley. So good. And season two, and this is why I'm going to love it. It really goes into the big rivalry between the Boston Celtics in the early 80s. Sure. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, so I'm like, I'm all in for that. Is there, was that, I understand at the very beginning of the show, there's a picture of me as a five-year-old crying because the Minneapolis Lakers moved out of town. (laughs) Hey, you know what? You should have moved with the Lakers. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, pardon me. Yes, I should have moved to L.A. as a five-year-old. No question about it. Hey, I was in Boston with the Celtics, and then I moved to L.A. That's true. I love that. But see, that was my team, though. The Celtics. After the Lakers left, the Celtics came my team, mostly because of Kevin McHale, I'm sure. Nice boy from uh, Hibbing, Minnesota. So I became a fan of theirs. But yeah, that uh, I got to try. Although I will tell you, I got we got very, very lucky. Didn't even know we were going to be lucky because we never watched it. But we started watching Barry last week. Oh, and that right. show is good. That's like one of Rudy's favorite shows. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it just happens that you just don't watch shows for some reason there was no reason we didn't watch it we just didn't and now i'm really glad that we didn't because now we got four seasons of it right and the grand total of what 32 episodes i think it is is it eight i'd be season? binge watching that i'd be like it's a good show <laughs> yeah i'm such a binge watcher on shows i understand but i i really enjoy he is terrific in it well everybody in it henry winkler is the most annoying pain in the ass on earth in that show yeah God, is he a pain in the ass. And it won him an Emmy. It did, yeah, yeah, exactly, for being a pain in the ass. No, really good. Is anything else out there like that? That Because there have got to be other shows that we, Catherine and I have never seen, like Barry. Have you watched White Lotus? I can't, I can't I remember it. if you have or haven't. Anytime they show a guy schwanz in the first episode, I'm out. You're out? I don't want to look at some guy's wiener. What, ugh. It's so good. And you know what I love about White Lotus is that like, each season's different because it's taking place at a different resort yeah. underneath yep. that resort name. So, yep. um, you know, season three, there it's in Thailand. Um, but I just think that they are so well done. And Jennifer Coolidge is just, she's in the first two seasons. She's such a treat. Oh, really? So that good, huh? Oh, it's yeah, so I, good. I loved it. Yeah. Should I try to track it down? 
I mean, it, I thought it was amazing. I loved all the seasons. It's very like you don't know where it's going to go, but all the stories are interesting. And it's rare that you find yourself wanting to know about all the stories. I feel like a lot of times in these shows, you go, I actually just care about this one storyline. Mm -hmm. And White Lotus here look kind of like, what's all this going on? Because they're all sort of interwoven because it is a resort. Mm -hmm. And so they interact, whether it's at breakfast or at dinner or yeah. they fall in love or, you know, something happens along the way. It's just really well um, laid out, I think. That's really done well. I love it. And who stars in it? Uh, Steve Zahn's in the first season. Oh, Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota, yeah. yeah. There's a, yeah. There, and there's a, and Jennifer Coolidge, obviously. She's like. In the first two. Yeah, first two. Um, yeah. Oh, Connie Britton is in the season season one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you think I should go back and give it a whirl? Sure. I think so. Yeah. And that's also on Max. So. So do they balance the scales and show a woman's vagina? Is that what they do? Yeah, to spread out. Why not? It. You know what? I Women's vaginas have been shown. It's time for the penis. <laughs> it's time for the penis. Here, here, sister. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, it's time for the penis. <laughs> it's, it's, it's penis is time to shine. Because listen, let me tell you. Yes. They need to carry the load. Hard boobs and vaginas and butts from yeah. women. You know who I blame? Jason Siegel. Yes, from, it's his fault. For getting Sarah Marshall. I blame yes. him. That's where this all started. Way to go, Buster. Oh. Okay. Time, it's the peen time to shine. <laughs> the peen. God, I haven't heard the peen in a while. The peen, baby. <laughs> we do have to take a break. Be right back. Kristen Burt is with us, ladies and gentlemen. Back in just a couple of minutes. You all have helped build my pillow into the incredible company it is today. Mike Lindell, the creator of my pillow, knows this and continues to give back to listeners with deals on his most popular products. You've heard me recently speak about the My Slippers, the Giza Dream Sheets. My Pillow 2.0, and more. Mike's latest offer is on his six-piece towel set. This set is made with U.S. cotton, USA cotton, making it extremely absorbent, yet still providing that soft feel you look for in a towel. The set comes with two bath, two hand towels, and two washcloths, typically retailing for $99.98. For a limited time, you can get this set on clearance for $25 with promo code TOM. That's over 70% in savings. These towels are machine washable, very durable, and come in multiple sizes and styles. To find this offer, just go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square to get this clearance price of $25 on the towel set. This deal will not last long. Enter promo code TOM for this special and many more. Why should your business bank with North American Banking Company? Here's Corey Wisco of the Wellshire. We're so grateful for uh, their support and, and just the fact that they truly believe in what we do. They, they took the time to get to know us. Uh, they have faith in what we do, and it's just been a great partnership that's just uh, always been based on success. They've always had our back every step of the way. For more information about North American Banking Company, go to nabanco.com. That's nabanco.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Kristen Burt with us. Uh, she's got, trying to talk me into watching White Lotus again. I've seen about 15 minutes of it. As soon as the Schwanz came out, I'm like, oh, Jesus, we're trying way too hard here. Hey, oh, You know what I mean? <laughs> it's Not so good, though. Hard. It's so good that you shouldn't let one penis turn you off to an entire series. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you very much. What um, is the premise of the show? I forgot. It's been a long time since I've seen it. It's a it's a resort. Uh, the mm -hmm. first season, I think, is in Hawaii. So um, and there's a, a series of different um, storylines going on. But there is a murder that takes place and it takes you back in time as to oh, how okay. it happened. <clears throat> Would I like the person that was murdered? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm just asking, would I like the murdered person? I ask myself that with every murder. I do too. <laughs> Did I like them? Was it justified? Like rats ass about you being murdered. Not really. <laughs> you know, one of those deals. So, what else? I need some uh, other Pat stuff Sajak to watch. Pat Sajak is I retiring know. from Wheel of Fortune. It makes me sad. I love Pat Sajak. I didn't realize he was 76. He doesn't look 76 no, at all. No, he does not. You're right about that. I've always liked that show, to tell you the truth. It's really good. Well, yeah, so he's got one more season. So he's got one more television season mm -hmm. to go through, and then he will retire. Uh, the big question, because Vanna White has not announced that she's retiring. She's 66. So I'm wondering, she has taken over for him as host. Um, he had surgery at one point, and he took over. Um, so I'm just wondering, will they allow her to host the show? And then bring in a new Vanna White, 
at this point because she did a great job. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's almost an insult, I feel like, if they don't promote her to the host role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean she wants it. I I would think so. Yeah, if she wants it, like this is like a perfect opportunity to shine. And the other interesting element to all of this, and I don't know if a lot of people realize this, is that Pat has brought in his daughter, Maggie. Mm -hmm. She has a behind the scenes role. She does all of their social media. And she has also taken over for Vanna White when Vanna White has slid into the host role. And I wonder if it's just going to be kind of like this seamless transition where maybe Vanna hosts and Maggie becomes Vanna. It could be. Like I said, it's a good show. That, that, uh, I think that'd probably be a really good call, actually. Well, especially, and I don't know if people remember this, but Sony also owns Jeopardy. And after the mm-hmm. debacle, when Alex Trebek passed away, you know, they did this stunt thing with all of the celebrities coming in and hosting. But then the executive producers decided, you know what? I'm going to make myself the host. It was Mike Richards. <laughs> and then all the allegations, all the people and all the skeletons came out of the woodwork and out of the closet. And guess what? He had that role for what? It, for two weeks at yeah. best. What did he do that they didn't like? Well, he had also run The Price is Right. He had a lot oh, okay. of um, sexual harassment allegations against him with a lot of the Barker's Beauties. I don't know if they still call them Barker's, Barker's Beauties. Beauty. You know, the models that they use on the show. <laughs> and it was one of those situations. He had he had a lot of problems, I think, with his temper. And then they sort of un you know, like sort of took the veil off and really revealed what happened in the steps to make himself the host. He could basically like con to everyone and mm-hmm. said, I'm gonna do it and this is my job. And he that he really wanted to be in the limelight. When I think Ken Jennings was probably kind of like the heir apparent the entire time. But at that point, they had gone down the list so far with all the celebrities. And then they quickly had to sort of scramble. And they brought in Ken Jennings and Maya Bialik to be the co-hosts. Well, so that's good. You think they'll stay with that? They're, they're definitely going to stay so with that. Are. Now, okay. um, with the writer strike, they do use WGA writers. Ken Jennings did cross the picket line. Maya Bialik did not. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Kind of interesting. Well, she does a lot more acting, doesn't she? Yeah, I feel like there's more at stake for her sure. as an actress, for sure. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Um, but he finished up her two-week run when the writer strike started. So we won't have any new episodes, I don't think, at all until <laughs> we wrap up this writer strike, though. Good but show, I think they've enough banked for the summer. That is a really good show. I do like that show. If you're really smart to be on uh, Jeopardy. Yeah, I would have to agree with you. There are not a lot of dummies on that show. That's a, yeah, have you known anybody that's been on there? I know one guy. Yeah, me one too. guy. Yeah, one guy I used to work with, uh, and actually, he used to. We just had her on. He uh, used to chum around with Mary Lou Henner mm-hmm. because they both have that same affliction. I can't even call it an affliction. I guess that superpower where they're able to mm-hmm. recall events. You know how Mary Lou has that right. thing where she can just like remember dates and times and where she was. And my friend Brad Williams has that same exact uh, mm-hmm. ability. Yeah. So you I saw you guys know? had Mary Lou Henner on the other day. She's Did you wonderful. guys talk about her superpower? Nah, no talking about the superpower. She was just she's a really good guest. We were just laughing a lot about because I've interviewed her eight billion times. She's a very very nice person. She's so sweet. I covered her during yep. a Dancing with the Stars season, and her superpower kept on messing her up. And it was one of those situations because, you know, when you learn a dance, oftentimes they're like, we're going to change this part and, you know, make it faster, make it slower, change the arms, whatever. But she kept on like reverting back to the original dance that she learned in her brain. Mm -hmm. And we would just be on the dance floor sometimes and just completely like blank because she'd be going to the old dance. Her partner, Derek Huff, was doing the new dance. It was crazy. I like it. That works for me. I've been very, very happy. It didn't happy work with for her. It. Yeah, well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> voted out. <laughs> that is the deal. So, yeah, I, hey, that all works out for me. Everything else good? Everything else is good. Hey, real quick, to get back to the person that they're going to replace, Van, or if, if Vanna White moves up and they replace Vanna with either Maggie Sajak, who I think should be the obvious choice here, uh, I hope they don't go with a guy. And the only reason why I say that is because if I don't know if you guys have you guys worked, but for a while there, I was a little unemployed and I spent a little time on the couch at 10 o'clock and then the Price is Right would come on. They brought in male Barker's beauties for a while. And I don't know if you guys saw it. They're still there. They're still there. They, those guys got to go. They got to <laughs> go. 
They, they look so dense behind the eyes, and there's just nothing there, and it feels weird. And here's the thing. When they talk about, like, they, should, they shouldn't subject women to beauty standards. Those dudes that are on The Price is Right, huge guns, six-pack abs. Yeah. Every time they bring out a boat, it's always a guy in board shorts with rippling abs, and he's got a tight jawline. And I'm just like, I don't want those guys in there. It takes away from it. What is, I don't you even want know. someone with a dad bod to come in. Yeah, I'd take that anytime. I want that guy doing a cannonball in, in a or cannonball in an above ground pool. That's what I want. And what what do you want the woman the women to look like? I'm t- for what I, I don't care. It doesn't oh, matter God. to me. It doesn't matter to me. I just don't like the guy on there. I would much rather have. It feels more natural. And you can have a woman as the host of the show if you want. Great, Thanks. go for it. Yes, absolutely. I'm just saying. Uh, it feels weird to have a guy up on stage who's all ripping and, you know, b- big Is guns and pecs and, yeah. Well, do you remember that Bob Barker got in trouble with the Barker's beauties? He mm-hmm. wound up having several, several uh, sexual harassment cases that he had to go and settle during his time on The Price is Right. And I feel like th- they happened maybe in, like, the late 90s or early 2000s. And ha- had it happened later, you know, had he still been working in, let's say, 2017, 18 it would have been a much bigger issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he'd had affairs too with, I think, several of the Barker's beauties. So I don't really understand. Why would you want to do that? Have an affair with somebody? I've never had an affair with anybody I worked with. I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I've seen it happen plenty on the job. Oh, really? And mm-hmm. like, especially when I was working um, and traveling for my job. And we had a whole host of team that worked with us while we were hosting the show. And people are away from their spouses. And it's just you you go out drinking after. It's the alcohol, I think, honestly, that really gets people into a lot of trouble. And I I am like the morality police. This is so funny. A friend of mine who is married, I caught her making out with another person. (laughs) And I literally came around the corner. And I had had a couple cocktails myself. And I'm like, what is going on here? And the two of them were like, (laughs) (laughs) and pulled apart. And I'm like, what? Okay, so everyone else gets like, you know, really romantic after having alcohol. And I'm the morality police, like killing everyone's buzz. I would be a wreck. I'd be so uncomfortable. I would tell, I'm telling you, I would tell on both of you two. I don't even care if I barely know your wife. I will tell on everybody. Like, She bribed me for a year with like massages, expensive dinners. Yeah, because she thought I was going to tell her husband because I do know her husband. And I was like, if this was just like a a fleeting thing, I'm going to let it go. But I'm like, if this keeps on happening, watch out. Although I could, my calves are a little tight. If you want to go ahead and make an appointment for that nice massage (laughs) a little bit later. I'm just (laughs) saying. My neck hurts here. Yeah. God. So don't go traveling with me on a long-term job yeah. and make out with a coworker because no, Chris and I'm with you. you. We would go around and just I would tell on everybody. I because so I, I can't have that on my head. I'd be like, listen, at some point I'm gonna tell your significant other in like a uh, an anonymous email, but I'm it's gonna happen. If I knew you're cheating, if people were cheating, I just that's just layers of bad karma. <laughs> Ugh. It is, and especially if you know the, the person's significant yes. other, and then yes. they find out that you knew. And I mean, this is this is stuff that also sort of like came into light during Vanderpump Rules this season. But it really makes people think: like, what would you do if you knew the spouse and you knew that the husband or wife was cheating? Like, do you tell? Do you not tell? Because you're also risking the friendship. Because there's a big chance that you will never talk to them again. That would make sense. Yes. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't, I don't hang around with people that do that. I don't need it. That you you know of. Well, but again, you can kind of tell because if they're gonna, you know, screw around in their spouse, they're gonna screw you over if they get a chance too. Sure. Yeah, but there, I've had like all of a sudden, like out of the blue, like an affair will come to light, like within Mm -hmm. a friend circle or something, and some people are really good at hiding it. Oh, I suppose. Yeah, I bet you that's true. Right underneath your nose. I've never understood the big difference. It's all kind of, you know, if you found somebody you like, what's the problem there? Right? They get bored with them or something? What happens? I mean, I would assume in my mind it's got to be the the emotional piece because it's, um, yeah, like obviously sex is exciting. And if you want to have sex with a new person or whatever, that's, you and I are kind of the same where we're like, it's hard to fathom that that matters that much. Right. But it's got to be the emotional piece, Mm -hmm. right, that you're missing or that you have kind of disconnected with your spouse, or I don't know, or maybe it is the excitement of 
doing something out of the normal day. Well, I told you yesterday, we have a dog, so he takes care of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why, Kristen. <clears throat> so I was looking for Catherine on Sunday night, right? And I was downstairs, and I got a call that we had to take care of something. <clears throat> so I went upstairs, and I walked into the bedroom, because during the week I don't sleep in that bedroom because it keep Catherine awake all night. That wouldn't be, she'd have to get up at like, you know, 5.30 in the morning. So I walked into the bedroom, and Catherine was just getting out of the shower. And our dog, Jude, sees me in the bedroom, sees Catherine in the bedroom naked, and goes in his kennel because he thinks we're going to have sex. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Every time that I come in that room and Catherine's naked, he thinks we're going to have sex. It's like, what? He had a little doggy popcorn dog. in front of him. Yeah, he like, got the popcorn. Jude, ready please. to go. Watch it all. That's so weird that dogs... They get into this routine, and it's like, well, if that's the routine, I'm going to follow it every time. Yeah. That's all that is, is just following a routine. But I just thought it was so weird. Yeah. It's like, would you settle down over there, you little pup? Calm down, dog. Calm down, dog. Relax. i got to go back downstairs. Do we all own dogs? Everyone on the show? Uh, we do. Yeah, I think I so. Don't. No? Does the cat? I don't know, Brittany, if you cats. Ever, ever have yeah, this. Don't where... see the other cat. The other cat doesn't come in the closet. I Just, just this one. Mm. Every morning. <laughs> Well, no, that's always the hardest when the animals jump into the room when you're just, like, oh, trying God. to enjoy yourself. You're like, yeah. hey, can you stop licking my foot there, Fido? Knock it off. Can you hit the road? See? Oh, they do that stuff. Absolutely, right. yeah. My, when I married my husband, he's like, no dogs upstairs. And I thought that's a, I hate this rule. But I'll tell you what. Like there are, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice when we come downstairs in the morning. They're all excited. And they have their, they have, like, these beautiful beds by the fireplace. They're fine. And I at first thought it was very emotionally hard, but it's it's nice because it just feels less like, I don't know, they're in the mix. I dated somebody where we he started messing around with me, and the dog was on the bed, oh, and I was God, like, no, he's got to, no. and he's like, no, we're fine, and I was like, this is not okay. I, I agree. this is not okay. Ah. <laughs> I agree with you on that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, look at that. all we ever do is we keep nice. Nice order in our lives. What, what can we say? Exactly. My cats are everywhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. You can't tell a cat where to go. But the cat, you know, if, if things are rocking in the bed, they'll, they'll exit really fast. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be around. Yeah. <laughs> very, very true. So I'm trying to think of one other thing, because I know we only got a couple of minutes left here, but I'm just trying to think about, is there anything? Now, we did just find Barry, as I said. I mean, I shouldn't say we found Barry. We knew about it before. We just never watched it for some reason. We've watched four episodes now. It's very, very good. Quite entertaining. Henry Winkler, as you said, won the Emmy for it. Are there another couple of things out there we should be watching? Uh, I feel, you know, I need to start keeping a running list because I feel like I recommend to you and you keep forgetting. So I'm like, and I keep forgetting. So I need to keep a running list of like, did you see this? Did you see this? But Winning Time, White Lotus. Our listeners I'm have asked for that too. They want a list from you of like top shows and stuff. So I think it'd be fun if we created like a go-to spot that they can see a list of this is what you should watch. Good idea. If you're looking for an upper or a downer or yeah. A, yeah. Yep. Yeah, remember back in the day at Blockbuster, they would always have employees picks. Yeah. Yep, yeah, they did. We should have they a did, Tom yeah. Bernard show. Yeah, employees yeah, and picks. Yeah, Tim Lammers can add to it, too. And Whoa, pump um, the brakes there, sister. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. It was not invited. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. No. But also, um, I was just going to say, in based on a true story, which I watched over the weekend, I got a lot of feedback from your listeners that they loved that with Kaylee Cuoco, who I know is not your favorite. <laughs> she no, was a teen. I yeah, she was a little teen when but I. But it's to a her. really cute show. It's it's an easy breezy like eight episode, thirty minutes each type of series that you can like blow right through, and it looks like they're gonna get a season two from the way they left the cliffhanger. So, okay, I gotta ask a question because it just popped in my head just now, and this is for our listeners as well. We're staying in contact with Brittany over there. Um, do you have an opinion of the worst TV series you've ever seen? That just popped mm -hmm. into my head, and I, was, I can't really think of one yet, but the worst TV series you've ever seen. ALF was, was pretty bad, ALF. ALF was terrible. Yeah, there were a lot of 80s things that yes. you'd be like, small wonder. Small like, wonder, I sit back yeah. and think, like, all the random, like, syndicated shows that popped on. Yeah. Um, that were just, like, you go back and you watch them, and you're like, how did I find this entertaining? Because they were really corny. Mm -hmm. um, not even, like, 
clever or and they always had like the precocious kid actors yeah i think that they've moved away from it's not really a style that you see an acting style you see anymore in like 2023 but seventh heaven was yes <laughs> that might be the worst that might be that one. Oh. What was oh, that all about? It was this uh, this guy who was a preacher. He was, and he was married to this blonde woman who was also very pious esque. And they had seven kids, and it was always like a life lesson. But the the storylines were just crazy. It was like. One of the kids gets an earring and decides that his friend is a meth dealer. So she's going to bring him. The dad gets involved and tells the meth dealer a story and brings him like what his life could be. And, you know, and brings, it's just the weirdest story. And that was on all the time, just casually. Seventh and the crazy cool. thing is that the actor who played the preacher in real life yeah. was involved in a child sexual abuse oh, case. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And so it, you won't, it's hard to find on streaming. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but um, the, it got yanked, I know, for several years based off of that. And it was his ex-wife, I think, who turned him in. Yeah. Um, because they had gone through therapy and things like that, or they were divorcing at the time. But there is, a, if you go onto TikTok and you go into like seventh heaven talk, if you like actually plug that into the hashtag, you will see people breaking down some oh. of the old episodes and yes. how unhinged yes. and like who was writing this. And I loved seventh heaven when it was on though. I was watching it all the time because it was so addicting. It was Same. crazy. Yeah. They did a musical episode, too, and nobody could sing. I mean, it was a mess. It was just a hot mess. That might be the worst. I think you're right, Britt. Yeah, it's really bad. We got some listeners out there just sent in the name of it. I've never even I don't think, you know, maybe I have heard of it, but I don't remember it. Apparently, it only lasted for one, maybe two episodes. It was called The Tammy Grimes Show. Have you ever heard of that? Hmm. Tammy no. Grimes, G-R-I-M-E-S, I guess. Tammy Grimes. It was a talk show. I think it only lasted like one episode <laughs> or maybe it's two. It's bad when you get one episode. Yeah, that's not good when you only get one shot and it blows up in your face. It was uh, four episodes altogether. Oh, was it all there? Yeah. Did they all make the air? Uh, 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 let's see. Four air. <laughs> 1966. Yeah. 1966, the Tammy Grimes show. Tammy Yikes. Grimes. Yeah. Our, we had a listener write in, too. <laughs> Uh, Max Headroom. Oh, I remember. Yeah, Max. Oh, Max yeah, Headroom. Max yeah. Headroom. Yeah. Well, that, he started out from a commercial, if I'm correct, and That's, then yes. it turned into a TV yep. series. Yep. Who did that again? There was somebody famous that did the voice of that. It wasn't his name, Max Headroom. Yes. Yeah. The no, cartoon. Right. He was a cartoon, wasn't he? Uh, I believe uh, the Matt Feet Frewer. That sounds right, sure. Uh, but yeah, I believe Pepsi is where he originated from, and then they mm -hmm. get yeah, because he was basically a talking head on a television. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. Like maybe a computer graphics sort of. Yeah. Esque. And you think like it's funny because it's Ted Lasso was also made from a commercial. So it's kind of funny because you, you can go either way with it where you go, why would you take something from a commercial and make a new show? Mm -hmm. And then also we had the caveman show as well. The, or the uh, Geico, oh, Geico oh, yeah, cave right. people or whatever. Um, yeah, certain ones make sense. Like to me, Ted Lasso makes sense because you can give him like a 3D, like full life, yeah. lots of layers. Max Hadrum. I don't know how you give, like, a guy in a TV, like, a, a real life. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. All right, sister, get back to work or go back to bed, whatever you need to do. I got to go back to work. <laughs> you do? What are you working on today? Anything good? Uh, yeah. Well, I have a bunch of articles to write. Um, I will see you on The Family. Yes, and today's family. And also, yeah. and then I'm headed to the studio to do a segment on for um, – 50 Inside, which is an entertainment show in France uh, Ooh. On, Ooh, Ooh, la la. La, on the whole la scandal la. between Natalie Portman and her husband, Benjamin Millepied, because guess yeah. what? He's having an affair. Very French. Do you know that anybody doesn't bang everybody in sight, for Christ's sake? Yeah, there are there are plenty of people, honestly. It's just that the... <laughs> she takes that yeah. seriously. I, I like that. that. I honestly think people are fascinated by infidelity, and I think that it, it's what captures the headlines. So if you have an affair and you don't want to get caught, you should probably end it right now, because right now that is like the topic du jour. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Yeah. All right, well, try not to have an affair before the uh, family show. I will do my best. I'll see you soon. Thank you. We'll talk to you <laughs> later. we got to take a break. Be right back. Chris Eggert, Channel 5 Eyewitness News will join us right after this. 
Uh, I'm just now approaching the end of my 60 days, as I know, as you know, I should say. Uh, I did complete the 60 days of weight loss program uh, with Minnesota MN Fat Loss, of course, mnfatloss.com. I've lost over 25 pounds. I feel fantastic, and that's very true. As a matter of fact, I played golf and ran yesterday, so I got a, I think I got a total of about seven or eight miles in. Getting it just around the corner. You know, I, here's the big deal. I've lost 25 pounds. I feel fantastic. And getting around is just a lot easier. My clothes fit better. There just really isn't a, a downside to losing the weight. You know that. Now I'll be going into the uh, maintenance phase of the MN Fat Loss Program, adding in a few more food choices to the mix. I've loved the program so much that I'm planning to go back on the weight loss program with the goal of lose another 25, maybe even 30 more pounds. That would be great. You will absolutely be able to lose weight like I've done and still enjoy the foods you love this summer. If you want to find out the secret to losing 20 to 30 pounds in just eight weeks, just like I'm doing, that's about a pound of fat every day. No exercise required. Schedule your free consultation. Go to mnfatloss.com. That is mnfatloss.com. Results may vary. Be sure to tell them the team at mnfatloss.com that Tom Bernard sent you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, joined by Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Any big headlines this morning, Chris? Uh, kids gone wild. You mean up in Brooklyn Park? Uh, all over the place. Uh, there, a bunch of kids uh, got in trouble last night, also in St. Paul, uh, for a graduation ceremony. Like two to 300 of them apparently came in late and uh, sort of being disruptive. And uh, there was a whole kerfuffle thing going on, so... Yeah, uh, the kids are going wild everywhere. And you know why that is, of course. Let's hear it. Well, because the national, not the local, but the national news is inspiring everyone to be the biggest asshole they possibly can be. You think those kids are watching the news? I do, indeed. <laughs> or their mom and dad are watching the news and they don't give a rat's ass about any of that stuff. No, I, it's literally everyone thinks right now they can do whatever they wish to do. And we talked about this briefly yesterday. Yeah, I, th I think that's probably true. Yeah, everybody thinks, that I'll do whatever the hell I want to do. Well, I'm sorry, but that ain't going to work in a lot of places. And I really don't understand why every time you get together, you gather uh, with the meaning of uh, uh, like a joyful uh, salute to somebody's graduation or whatever, that you got to start fist fights and you got to get violent. Really? That is yeah. so crazy. It's insane. I know. I know, but not all kids are getting in fights. No, not all, but hundreds of them are. <laughs> not all <laughs> kids are disrupting their graduation. <laughs> <laughs> Only not, several hundred. Not all kids are doing bad stuff, but yeah, it's. I mean, it, it, you, I mean, definitely tell it's summer. That stuff's going on. I, I, I mean, that's three days in a row. I've had some kind of story about something you know the youth gone wild plus i just want to reference that fantastic skid row song youth gone wild yes mm -hmm. well there is that did i never went through anything even close to that to get in slug fests of 150 people or what the hell why wouldn't you just get up and go i don't want to be here right now and wander off yeah i i mean i was afraid to like just I don't know, though. I, it's you're, it's a different world, that's for sure. Well, it is. But, I mean, look, it's not just the national news either. It's politicians. All they do is spew no. hatred now. Uh, yeah. They're teaching our children to become very violent and very unhappy. It's sad. You know what they should do is join a walking club. I agree. You get horn your, tootin'. What, you can't get in any trouble if you're trying to get your steps in. Uh, yesterday, I really dropped the ball. I didn't get all my steps in. I'm pretty embarrassed. I'm going to make up for it today. Mm -hmm. But speaking of resilient kids, can we talk about the four kids that got in a plane crash in the Amazon and survived? I know. that that It almost doesn't even seem like that's a real thing that happened. That's a crazy story. Also, that 13-year-old who basically kept that baby alive, now she's yeah. always going to be on the hook to babysit. I know. Mm -hmm. I, I sit and go, oh, I, I have trouble keeping my own kid alive who's that around that age, and I have all the things. And she was in the Amazon and kept an 11-month-year-old alive yeah. for 11 40... 11-month-year-old. I knew she 11 was month, Well, 11-month-old for, for 40 days, mm -hmm. Tom. That's crazy. In the Amazon. That's Who a wild cares? story. Who hasn't done that? That's true. Yeah, no, we've all been through that, yeah. haven't we? Heck, Tom's car broke down on Highway 5 one time. He got himself all the way back to his house. Uh, I had to call like... 
two people. Yeah. Which is exhausting. Yeah. It's really exhausting. There's no question about it. So how long were they in the Amazon? 40 days. 40 days? Yeah. Jesus. They're, the, was it toasty? They, they Not only did the plane crash and all the adults died, the mom took like three God. days to die. So the four kids oh, were with Jesus. her. Oh, God. And then she died. And then what they would do is they'd, they'd like go in the trunks of trees at night. Oh, yeah. But if anyone has been around a baby... They cry all the time at night. And so it's like the most yeah. vulnerable noise for all these animals around the mm -hmm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. And they made it for 40 days. What did they eat? Um, they, they, the 13 year old had some knowledge of what to eat in the Amazon. And I think they had like oh, that's good. a bag of flour, some fruit, and like that's it. Fruit and a flower. Hey, kids, you want some more fruit and flour for yeah. dinner? Yeah. Yeah, baby. The photos of them, I mean, they're very skinny, but I cannot believe the 11-month-old. Do they know how they survived the crash when everybody else died? No, they don't know a lot of the details yet, but they're still coming out with it. It's just a wild story. It's a hell of a story. Yeah. No doubt about that, if you know what I'm saying. How long before that <laughs> movie comes out? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say mm -hmm. that. Um, and that makes me think about all those um, miners that were trapped. Like, uh, people get into these situations where you think it's sort of an unsurvivable thing, and then mm -hmm. when they walk away from it, it, it it's almost like it's, it's not even a real thing. I mean, yeah. can you imagine that, being trapped in a mine no. in complete darkness? What about my or, helmet? What's that? What about my helmet with the lantern on it? I think the helmet lantern runs out after a certain amount of days. I am not a miner. I do not have a mining background. <laughs> what? I know. I know. It seems crazy. Good Straight God. from the coal fields of South Dakota. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's very, very sad. So how many people did die in the plane crash? Um, I can't remember how many. I like three, uh, three adults? I thought three. Three but, altogether, yeah. yeah. So what kind of, it was a light plane? Yeah, it was yeah. a Cessna. Is that how you say it? Something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, what a horrible thing to go through. Because you know. know you're dying. When a plane starts going down, you know you got a problem. That's what's so wild that these kids survived. I know. It's I, amazing. It's just layers in that they never gave up and they found them. I mean, yeah, it's just crazy. Do you think maybe one of the kids is the one who shifted her into reverse and made the plane crash okay, anyway? Okay, calm down. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I don't know why yeah. you want to blame the kids. I think yeah. it was their yeah. fault. If Dad didn't have to turn around and be like, I will turn this plane right, right. around. Yeah. Right arguing. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right on the money, mm -hmm. right there. You little bastards. <laughs> don't make me come back there. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> exactly. I've never even been in. I've had planes drop several thousand feet when we're in the air, but I've never even been close to it plane crash you guys ever been involved in anything like that no not an actual crash but some that said we have to be careful or something like that no i remember no, i was in a bumpy flight back from new york once and it was it was if bumpy and there was like a storm going on and i just remember this girl scream crying that i don't want to die yeah. oh god and i just kept thinking Thank like you. does she think we do like i couldn't get that out of my head of going does she say like why does she have to verbalize that like i just mm -hmm. could not get my wrap my head around her screaming that yeah but, that was that was the bumpiest flight i'd ever taken back was from new york right when we had taken off and the woman sitting next to me i mean the plane was it was jarring all over the place. Yeah, it was yeah. the worst turbulence I've ever experienced. And this woman was like, Jesus Christ. And she was hanging on, white knuckling the whole time. I had bombed terribly at a sold out theater like 12 hours before this flight. And I was like, this plane can crash. I don't want to live. I'm ready to die. I don't want to face life. Please let this plane go down. God, I was trying to think, is that because of the Great Lakes, the turbulence over the Great Lakes and all that? Is that what that the problem is? I'm not sure, but yeah, we had a lot of those like really dramatic drops where yeah. you drop and like everything goes oh, up. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's funny. I never had my head until she started yeah, bringing in the option of death. Like my head was never like, are we going to make it? It was more like, ugh, this is kind of yeah. bumpy. I, I don't know, because we left Newark. I don't know if you've ever been oh, in New York. Yeah. It's pretty dirty. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. the trash yeah. is what was causing that turbulence. Could be. <laughs> yeah, Newark was an interesting airport. There's no doubt about uh -huh. that. But I, yeah, I don't remember though, because I used to fly back and forth from New York all the time, and I don't remember it being all that bumpy. But maybe I just forgot. Mm. Probably that was a long time ago, actually. So, yeah, that uh, I used to care much more about that than I do now. I think you get to a certain point in life is like, 
eh, what the hell if it crashes, what's the difference? Right? I'll never know it crashed after about three minutes. Yeah, I, the first 10 seconds would suck during that, that crash. Not but be after good. that, whatever. Yeah, yeah would not no be deal. good. Mm -hmm. I, I can't fly anymore without being... Did you guys see that movie with Denzel Washington when he was the drunk pilot? Yeah. Dude, that ruined flying for me. <laughs> like, it's still... That... That movie pilot. is disturbing. Do you want eyes on pilot, or do you just... I don't know, but the freaking the it was the very beginning, right? Like yeah. uh, that scene, man. Like it is intense, yeah. well done. Like to make you feel that way, and yet I don't know how many years that movie came out, and I still like can't get on a plane without thinking about that. That was a good movie. What is it called? And then, and then I'm like, why didn't I become what? a pilot? Yeah, I think it's flight pilot, something like that. But, but yeah, yeah. He, but yeah, he turns the yeah, plane flight. upside down, Tom. Why? Why? To save everybody, apparently. I was like, that's the move no, that you chose? He's, he's wasted. Yeah. He's wasted. Yeah. So he's a wasted pilot. The whole movie starts, and it, like, starts with, you don't know what he is. Yeah. It starts with him and this woman. He does, like, a line of Coke and drinks some, you know, vodka and is, like, making with this lady. And then he freaking gets dressed and walks and gets on the plane and flies the yeah. Oh yeah. my God. He's yeah. messed up. But then he realizes he makes a big mistake, and then he turns the plane upside down. That happens in the movie. Am I just making that up? I, I think so. I yeah. think so. But I don't think it's in the. I think he's just so messed up. That's why. Yeah, yeah. I've never even heard of this movie. What's it called? Flight. It's called Flight. Yeah, it's good. He does a good job well, he's in good, it. Good. Yeah. Um, it's like a big alcoholism movie, right? Like yeah. that to me is what like it's one of those movies where you're just like, it's a. Uh, uh, it, what was that? Um, it wasn't glamorizing it at all. Like, yeah, yeah not it's all. not it's like the rock very... star lifestyle. It's like this is how bleak yeah. it can get. Kind of had like a leaving Las Vegas kind of like alcoholism take on it. So, yeah, man, and, and John Goodman plays the drug dealer. Is that right? John Goodman shows up like when he has to go do the dissertation in front of like yeah. the council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, John yeah. Could, he's so wasted. John Goodman shows up with like a big thing of cocaine and sticks it in front of him and is like, "This will get you to normal." Yeah. It's like, well, I don't know if it's going to get you to normal, man. You're just going to yeah. go further down the deep end. I don't. Yeah, yeah, that that was. I don't know if there's too many uppers that'll get him back. But yeah, he had to go into court, like you said, and yeah. it was like the whole thing was a good movie. But I could see how you would be. So you you do fly though, right, Chris? I mean, I don't get to that much anymore, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I will. It's not, I'm, I'm, it's not like that, but okay. Tom, when you were, when things were like, you know, uh, kicking at the height of stuff for you and money and influence and whatnot, did you fly privately? I have no answer for that question. <laughs> you don't want to start bringing up private flying. People do not like that at all. Well, I was just I was just curious because um... not not much actually. I just see back in the day the big difference was before the internet. You used to have, if I had to go to New York, I went to New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, yeah. Dallas. Where you had to fly wherever you were going to cut those commercials. You couldn't just. I mean, obviously, I could sit here and do every damn one of them today, but you had to fly all over the United States to get that done. And some of that was a massive pain in the ass. So once in a while, yes, I would have to fly private. That is Well, true. that's what I was wondering. Yep, I mean, like, you got true. a movie studio and stuff, and they want yep. you there to, to cut that trailer. Like, they're, they're going to get it done, and they're going to get you there as soon as possible, right? Yes. I did. Are you asking me this because a bunch of people sent me the movie trailer to At Close Range again? No, Some no. People I find I, that it's, movie. It's, I don't know why. But then they send, hey, look, this sounds like you. Well, there's a reason for that. You're like, yep, it is me. God, I used to do a lot of movie trailers. A lot. I used to do tons of those. But that was, God, that was a long time ago. It was before KQ, actually. Yeah. They don't do movie trailers anymore, which kind of pisses me off. I loved movie trailers. I'm. Sh that's cool, man. What a. I, that's like the coolest gig. Let me think about that and get back to you. <laughs> well, that was, I mean, I no, it was great. I imagine it is. I always like, I always think it'd be like really cool to be like travel guy. Like, Hey, I'm traveling. I'm going here, there, but anybody it who was, has to travel a it lot was, says yeah. it's also like very, you know, it's not easy either. Right. Mm -hmm. So it depends if you have to do quick turnarounds. Those are a bitch. Yeah. yeah, there's yeah. No doubt about that. There's no question about it, but yeah, flying into like Atlanta. I used to love to go to, I can, is it Ike's bar 
there uh, by the term Terminex building or whatever the hell it's called. Mm. God, there's a there's a bar. It's been there for 125 years, and I can't. I think it's Ike's Bar, but I, I'm not sure. But you would get to go to places like that, and that made it even better. So you'd go and you'd work, you would bust your ass, and then you go, hey, let's go have a little dinner, and you go to these really wonderful places in town. That 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 I enjoyed a lot. That was great. You know. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I don't. Yeah. I've never spent a lot of time in Atlanta. Great town. Yeah, really. Great. Oh. Buckhead's magnificent. Okay. Really, really great. The people are very, very nice. I mean, they're again, you don't want to piss anybody off in Atlanta because they don't put up with a lot of that. But no, I, I enjoyed my time in Atlanta. It was fan- except for going to visit Cumulus. I didn't care for that. Part. <laughs> that part of going to Atlanta, I did not care for. I got to be honest with you. Yeah, that's funny you say that because they offered me a night job in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. And wouldn't fly me down to come, like, see the place. What? Wouldn't, wouldn't let me come and see it. They wouldn't negotiate on money. God. And it was right after, you know, they had the big 93X, everybody got canned type of thing. And they were like, well, why don't you come down? And here's the deal. You're going to make extra money because you're going to voice track. You'll be in Atlanta, but you'll voice track other cities like Houston, New Orleans, Maybe even Minneapolis. Yeah. I said, well, then why don't you just keep me in Minneapolis and I'll <laughs> exactly. track Atlanta? And they go, and it doesn't work like that. Why they were going to pay me $35,000 a year to move my entire family what? down to, to Atlanta? Atlanta to do the night gig. And I said, I, I hate to tell you this, bud. I am making double that selling couches in a mall right yeah, now. There you go. And then yes. on yeah. top of it, have support of, from your family to watch your kiddo. How dumb. It's just wild <laughs> to think that you were going to make that move. Yes. Silly. So it's like the old days for radio. Mm-hmm. They're back to that where nobody makes any money anymore. Sure. Yeah. Nice touch. Yeah. We're going to keep it all because we're a hedge fund. Okay, good for you. Yeah. I'm happy. I made uh, like $7,000 a year on my first radio job. There you go, yeah. baby. Wow. Much? Crushing it. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't know. But it was at KSDP, so I wouldn't tell you anyway. 1,500 good. KSDP, baby. Trade secrets. What's it now? ESPN Radio? Isn't that what it is now? Score North. Score North. Oh, the whole channel's called Score North now? Technically, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I had yeah. no idea. Yep. Yeah. I believe they still have the AM signal just in case the world goes to shit and we need to send a signal over to yeah. Europe. But yep. other than and that... I listen, they... to the, I listen to the AM because they carry St. Thomas football games. Oh. So on s- Saturdays, I'm all about the old uh, Score North. Mm-hmm. Who, who uh, does the announcing for that then? That's impressive. Because <laughs> they must know all the kiddos' names. I always, because we watch a lot of that um, from my niece and nephew up in Pine River back as we watch them on YouTube. And it blows yeah. my mind. Yeah. Not only do they know the names, but they're like, fun fact, his parent, you know, his dad was also great. You know, it just, bl- I just, they're actually really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That, that, have you guys ever done, like, uh, play by play or anything like that in your careers? I did as, as a guest, not ever professionally. Yeah. <clears throat> what'd, what'd, what'd you call it, Tom? Uh, twins game, but there's many, many. Not the whole game, just a couple of innings. Sure. Yeah. Was it hard? No. No. It was really, this guy sucks. I just kept doing that. <laughs> I'd, I'd listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for a while when I was when I was doing AM radio. It's really, I mean, it really is an art. You don't quite realize what goes into it until you're actually calling a game and it's a it's a weird you got to walk this weird line where you don't want to get in the way of the game but you also have to imagine that you know you're seeing it nobody else is seeing it they're just hearing it and it's yeah it's weird it's very weird i think i was probably terrible at it but I don't know about that. But, like, you know, this weekend we were watching some baseball, and uh, they were talking about one of the announcers. I can't remember who he was announcing for, but they were like, can you believe that he is 87 years old? And I was like, yeah, because he's calling baseball. (laughs) There you go. Try to have that guy call a hockey game. It's never going to happen. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's too fast. Far too fast. Much different deal. You do take... You know, and for granted when people are good at it, like basketball, like Tafoya was always really good at. She, that's where she got her all. Of, you know, uh, basketball. Her, yeah, she did. I didn't a, know that. She did, but uh, did a bunch of basketball games early in her career. And when they're good at it, you just you don't really notice them there. You kind of just it. it like you said, Chris, it kind of interweaves nicely. And then when they're bad at it, you notice pretty dang quick. I would be yeah. terrible at it, obviously. I mean, it's you guys, it's no different than what you're doing on a daily basis or what anybody who does this kind of work. Like the whole idea is that 
it it seems like it's so effortless, right? Yeah, like it, it does. Just come it across does. as it's, it's just so easy for them. Maybe I'll call um, Matt Hoy. I'll call Matt Hoy and tell him, "Hey, Matt, I want to come in and do all nine innings of a game on the radio, but I want to do it as nine different people." <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? I, I like that idea. I, I assume Rodney Dangerfield will get a inning. Get one. Right? Get a little little Harry Carey. Got he's got to do yeah. at least one inning. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to have Harry yeah. in there. Yeah. That yeah. that would be fun. I would actually enjoy doing that. There'd be no question because I'd make a complete ass of myself, which I do I'd on a daily basis anyway. I, I'm I'm listening to that. You know, one of my favorite things about Harry is unfortunately toward the end of his career, because we used to have him on once in a while. Just a great guy. But at the end, he wasn't thinking too clearly. You ever yeah. heard any recordings of him doing games at the end of his life? Bad. Oh, God. It's like, now we're in the thir- fourth inning, and uh, we're having a great time here. <laughs> like, oh, God. Can you hear the ice cubes in the bottom right? of the <laughs> Yeah, well, Again, just I, maybe. I would listen to that. Like, I, you know, like, that to me, I'm in. I would listen to yours. Great? And I would listen to his. Wouldn't it be great? Be, what the hell are they doing bringing Pagan into the game again? <laughs> Just a bitch about all the players. I would, lo- I would listen to that in a heartbeat, Tom. I would too. I gotta send I would it, too. I'll, I'll call Matt Hoy. We'll get it all set up. Although I don't think the AM, uh, the, the excuse me, the radio announcers for the Twins would care much for that, probably. Yeah, but that's Dan fine. Gladden, Gladden wouldn't probably care much for we'll that. We'll call it, like, alternative calling. We can do it right on the podcast. We can just jump on the app and listen to it. No, it's not as fun. you got to do the real game. That's what I'm saying. You'll do the game. Oh, I see what you're saying. But we'll kind of get away with we can say whatever because we'll just do it through the app. This Done. guy has no talent at all. <laughs> you wouldn't should live good? stream that, it. That Why not? That would be fun. That would be a lot of just fun. Just watch the game here. I would the- actually just pay to have you live stream all kinds of, like, just regular things in life. <laughs> like, like you just would sit. You, you would just watch, like, a feed of the grocery store and watch people going through <laughs> the line at the grocery store. The that dog. would be fun. And you'd be like, what in the hell are they that thinking? That would be a lot Why of fun. Need, like, whatever it might be, I would just enjoy – Tom looking at something and doing the play-by-play for for whatever. The Westminster Dog Show. I look would, at the puppy. Look mm-hmm. at that dog. What does he think he's better than me? <laughs> yeah. He's got a fluffy tail. <laughs> that dog's a disaster. It's <laughs> a goddamn disaster. There's an app that you can do this on because Jeff Cesario used to do. Oh yeah. He used to do this bit called Chet Waterhouse. Mm-hmm. That was so funny. It was like he his, was great. His character was like a sports reporter, but then you would watch like Game Five of the NBA Finals, and he would. Call Call the game as Chet Waterhouse. And then every once in a while, when they'd go to break, while he was just sitting there watching commercials, he'd be like, this break is brought to you by Riff Raff, the only boating store ran by convicted convicts. And it was always stuff. Go. It was so good. We He's should set great. that up. That'd be best. super fun. Yeah. It's like Leslie Jones when she would do the live streaming of the Olympics. The Olympics yes. It was so good. That it, well, I, I can get a hold of Cesario, no problem. We'll give him a call. It'd be, that'd be fun if you just live stream something. You know, I should probably check and see if I, I, I got to believe I still have his number. I haven't talked to him. And when he comes to town, I talk to him, but I haven't talked to him on the phone in a while. But talk amongst yourselves and I'll check. Well, I mean, I think that we could easily figure out his number between. Yeah, between all of us. Yeah. Well, I, I would yeah, like I, to have I'm Tom thinking. do the play-by-play of the the KSTP Hubbard Broadcasting walking team. Mm-hmm. That would oh, be oh, shots yeah. fired! The, the, shots. The Brittany's on. I've never met anybody so jealous of something, and that's where. Well, I-, I don't know why that pisses me off so much. I was just walking through the cafeteria, and I saw this group of people who I didn't recognize. And I just looked at them, and the first thing I thought, I was like, oh, I bet they're on the walking team, too. <laughs> Dan Seaman is killing it. The top two players on our walking team right now are Julia and Dan Seaman. Like, Okay. Wait a minute, what? Yeah, they're on our team. <laughs> Who? On, on what team? Our, our step challenge that Chris keeps bringing up because he really feels insulted that he wasn't invited. Does semen ever work? Yeah, while For walking. Christ he sake. must have like a walking desk because <laughs> he's disaster. killing it in the game. Oh, he's killing it. <laughs> he's got more steps than anybody, him and Julia. Oh, does he really? I'm mortified. I really dropped the ball yesterday. Yesterday was my first day that I only got 10,000, so I'm... I'd like to apologize to the my walkers. I'm going to step it up today. 10,000 steps is what, about five miles? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It makes sense. So I saw these, like, three over here that I walked in, and I'm just imagining them, like, 
having a coffee and then let's go out and do our walk. And I'm like, it just pisses me off. I don't, I don't understand. There more people are more productive. If you get a walk in, it, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I apologize to anyone involved in the walking team. It's just, <laughs> You're a disaster. We don't accept your apology. Cause it's, it's followed by a, it's stupid. And I hate it. No, no, no. I, I why would I begrudge someone of positive <laughs> in their lives? <laughs> why would you? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I think we got to look inward. Hmm? Hmm? Tommy, did you do like the, when you were doing your early morning shift for so long, uh, did you kind of live the martyr thing of having to go to bed and wake up at the hours you did? And Oh, like, yeah, it was a thrill. You can't help but get into that mindset oh. when you're working those hours. Yeah, because you got to go to bed at 8 o'clock to get up at 4 o'clock. I mean, right. it sucks. It's hard. I bet Catherine just, I mean, that, that was a long a long stretch of your life. I bet she's so glad to have you like not in that right now. Not true at all. She hates it. I have to be around you more. Forget it. No, (laughs) no, no, that's not it. it, Listen, she obviously likes you or she wouldn't be there anymore. Well, that is very, very true. Catherine and I, uh, I do love that woman dearly. There's no question about it. That must've been hard with the kiddos when you're. Oh God. Yes. Like, okay. That they're, especially at the age when they can stay up to like, let's say like, nine and you're going to bed before them that must have been hard the worst part of having little kids and being involved in that whole business yeah is you could be on the radio and the highest rated morning show in america and i would hear my daughter at like four and my son at six years old yeah he does that radio thing but actually it's kind of cool because he's on the monsters inc cheddar cheese uh, box Oh, he's on the commercial. He does the voiceover for the macaroni and cheese. They were impressed with that. Not the morning show. Oh. You know, with a 30 share. They didn't care about that. My nephews don't care about anything I do. They don't care about anything. I mean, there'd be times where, you know, they'll listen to me in the car. It doesn't matter. The minute I fostered a pregnant dog, it was then they talked about constantly. <laughs> yeah. To this day, they'll be like, this is my auntie. She fostered, you know, I'm like, that's not a job, you guys. You can't tell everybody, like, I foster dogs is my job. It's just funny what kids are impressed with. Flea it's from the true. Red Hot Chili Peppers, he, was, he told a story one time about how he, he was like, his, da- his son made him drop him off four blocks from school because he didn't want to see his, have his dad with him. And ah, he's like, do right. you understand who I am? I know. That's the reason. Wow. I am Flea. I, I play to 60,000 people in arenas like, like 10 times a year. Everybody knows me. People want to be me. I'm not cool enough to drop you off at school. And he's like, yeah, we'll see you later, old man. He just got out of the car and started walking. <laughs> I also think, like, my family's got this, like, weird high bar because we have our my cousin Katie Ledecky, who's on the Olympics. So my nephews, they'll literally be like, yeah, but auntie, are you on TV getting a gold medal? And I go, no, nope, I'm not. Like, fine. Not right now, but maybe in the future. <laughs> maybe later. Maybe later down, down the line. It's true. Yeah. All right, Mr. Eggert, we got to get you back in studio one of these days. And where the hell is Hannah? Let's she's go. On maternity leave. No. How's the baby? Uh, I, she's posting pictures from time to time, and the baby looks delightful and handsome and cute and all that. And it makes me, th- you know, have fond memories of when my kids were that age. Oh, yeah. But then yeah. I'm also like, remember the horror of that little baby squeal in the middle of the night? <laughs> and you're, like, oh. you're like trying to get one. just a freaking half hour of sleep oh, and yeah. then you hear it coming and you're like yeah the other day i don't know if you guys will be able to relate to this but maybe you were involved a little bit but the other day i heard the noise of uh, 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 and i thought back to pumping pumping alone in a room Ooh. and it was so triggering i was like i have to leave this room right now and i'm like every time i remember how much i loved the baby time i go but remember when you're manic depressive pumping alone in a dark room yep, yep. <laughs> It's a dream come true, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. All right, Chris, we will talk to you again tomorrow, Buster. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Looking forward to it. We will be right back in a couple of minutes. Sean Weber, the president of Hemp Growers Co-op, will be our special guest right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live on the Tom Bernard Show app or at TomBernardShow.com.
Ready, set, summer. Hi, Judd Zolgad here. You know, the unofficial start of summer, well, it's here. Whether you're heading to the beach, the ballpark, or a barbecue, summer's more fun when you are feeling your best. Let Livia Weight Control Centers help you make the most of our beautiful summer days. Join Livia's doctor-recommended program today and get eight weeks free. That's right, eight weeks for free. You could lose up to 15 pounds or more by the 4th of July. I lost 40 pounds on this program a couple of years back, and I'm going to tell you the most important thing. The dietitians and nutritionists at Livia are going to help you maintain weight loss. We've all lost weight, right? Inevitably, it feels like it comes back. Not with this program. It has done right by me, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to do right by you. Summertime is here, and Livia wants you to make the most of it. Call 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A or visit Livia, L-I-V-E-A.com. Join today and get eight weeks for free. Again, 15 pounds or more lost by the 4th of July. Are you kidding me? Call 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Livia voted Minnesota's best weight loss program two years in a row. Check them out to lose the weight. It's Tom Bernard for the Power Lodge and the world's largest Bennington pontoon dealer, Miller Marine in St. Cloud. Temps are up, prices are down. We just hit 88 degrees, so Miller Marine and Power Lodge are offering hot 88 summer deals for the next two weeks only. Get a Bennington pontoon for 28888 And as a bonus, the first eight pontoons come with a trailer for $1,888. Finance it all for just $288 a month. Want something larger? Get a tri-tune starting at $43,888 or just $488 a month with over 300 pontoons in stock. They've got what you need at the world's largest Bennington dealer, Miller Marine and Power Lodge. Payment terms and credit limits are subject to credit approval, so come on, it's time to get serious about your throttle therapy with this two-week deal until June 17th. Check selection at PowerLodge.com and MillerMarine.com. Hot 88 summer deals with Bennington pontoons are now at the Lodge and Miller Marine. And please tell them Tommy sent you. Yeah, you'll all piss me off very soon. It just said someone will piss them off very soon. Yeah. So apparently it's going to happen. There's As no if... question. You got no hearing? Uh, nothing's coming. Oh, through. okay. Mm-hmm. Nice way to complete the I job, sister. I yeah, no, no. I, 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 you're well, wrong. I could hear. I just... Get any audio through these. There you go. Way to go. How about how are we doing? We're good? Okay, I got to open up, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Weber, president of Hemp Growers Co-op, in studio with us. Now, Sean, this is going to sound a little weird probably, but do you have a relative named Dale? I do not. Not your grandfather, not anybody. (laughs) I don't believe we have a Dale in the entire tree. I worked for a guy named Dale Weber. Man, you look just like him. So it must be a Weber deal. <laughs> must be some of those German Austrian roots, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it is. No, Dale was the uh, he was the president of WDGY Radio back in 1975. I went to work with him there, but he walked. I'm like, damn, that guy's name is Weber. He looks just like Dale, but who knows? I'll take it as a compliment. No, it was a compliment. He's a very good guy. Very good. Bad. There are a bunch of other people I could say that. Uh, you would not care for, so you know, but you don't look like them, so that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> I'm not sure where this is going. No, it was a compliment. It was, it was a huge yeah. compliment, actually. Yeah, we are dealing with a weed guy here, so we've got to be a little slower. <laughs> a little paranoid, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going that route, but Sean, I gotta be honest with you if it wasn't for THC, I would never sleep. It's a fact. I, uh, it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me, and I'm, I'm sorry that it took so long for most people to get to that point where they legalized THC. Um, it's so rela- – well, I had a friend in it. Uh, Ryan Winkler. I don't know if you know Ryan Winkler. Very well. You know Ryan? Great guy. He's a really good friend. He brought in some of his – from his crooked beverage. Yeah, him and Christian. Yeah, really, really good. I, and he gave me the, the three-milligram one, and I drank it. It was very tasty. Yep. And the thing I loved about it, Sean, is the fact that it just made me very relaxed. I didn't get high, no buzz, nothing. I just got really relaxed and felt really great. Takes the edge off. It does. I love that about THC. Yeah. Why did it take so long, do you think, because of the alcohol industry? Uh, well, well, we'll go ahead and we'll put on our little tinfoil hats <laughs> and we can speculate. But, I mean, okay. I mean, recently, you would say it's 100% politics, right? It is, yeah. Um, yeah. Prior to that, you could say it was more, you know, capitalistic prevention, if you will, from the, uh, who is it, like Dow Chemical, for yeah, oh example. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. If we know the story from back in the early 1900s. But, yeah, it's it's all driven by money and politics. So, like everything else in the world, it's like all everything money else in the world. politics. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, with everything said and done, um, being the 23rd state, 
puts us in the progressive category. Yeah. At least we're in the front half. Yeah. If we waited three more, we would have been screwed. Yep. But <laughs> mortified. <laughs> mortified. But I mean, you you watched all those red states legalize over the last few years, and you kind of scratch your head. Yeah. Like, yep. what do they know that we don't? I and, agree. And it actually, Nolan West, uh, Republican. Uh, Senator Nolan West or representative, I apologize, Mr. West. Um, but he called his own colleagues out and he says, this is not a partisan issue. Look at all of these it's states not, yeah. that are Republican controlled that have legalized. And so, yeah, I mean, there's that. Yeah, we get pretty lucky because we do have people like Ryan Winkley. We talked about Pat Garofalo is very helpful in all these areas from what I understand which is good. Somebody's headphones are up really yeah, loud. I hear it that. Might, that might be mine. Is it yours? I didn't think it was, but maybe. It, I turned them down just in case. Okay. But no, I, I just, I, I'm glad to see we're progressing because obviously the amazing thing for me uh, in my era as a child, watching people drink like fish and smoke like stacks, apparently that was good for you. Apparently, <laughs> like, yeah. What? <laughs> Are you really? Uh, seriously, you should have seen, but I was a kid. I mean, in like the late 50s, early 60s, everybody smoked and drank like madmen. I mean, women, men, all the rest of it. So had we gotten to this 100 years ago, I wonder how that would have changed our society. I've never thought of that, but that's a really, really solid point. I mean, look at what we've done. Yeah. I mean, just we, we've completely stigmatized the plant. Um, even with legalization, we still treat it like it's a no-no and it's prohibited. Mm -hmm. They want child-resistant tops. They oh yeah, they um, do have child-resistant tops. They, they, they want they yep. want to do um, potency caps. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the counter argument is, is why do we not do that with alcohol? I couldn't agree right. more. Why don't we? Sure. Right? So couldn't agree more. But one of my, <laughs> I I just love these arguments. I, I the whole situation. Uh, doing. I heard a guy. And he might have been a little high when he was being interviewed, because now uh, in Minnesota you can have up to, what, two pounds of, of marijuana? At home, yes. You can at have home, up to yeah. two pounds after August 1st. After August 1st, Let's yes. Let's just put that out there. <clears throat> yeah, we should put that out there. It's only, <laughs> it's only another 60 days or something. Just it's not that big off, a deal. Yeah. Just not even on, that long. Yeah. yeah, hold off. But my favorite thing is I actually did see an interview with a kid, and I don't know how old he was. He was not very old. You could tell he might have hit the pipe a little before the interview. Because he said, well, I heard it was like two pounds. And do you know if I can carry that around with me? <laughs> well, that, that, yeah, that's aggressive. That's big. Yeah. I mean, it's a I'll big bundle, right? There. I'll let him borrow my baby carrier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. right? Just right, yeah, push right it where down I can the street. see it. Yeah, you walk around like Atlas with <laughs> yeah, this thing on your back. Totally. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you wanted to carry the whole two pounds around <laughs> with him. Yeah, what kind of life are you living when you need that at hand at all mm -hmm. times? I'm telling you, though, honest to God, and I made it very clear to Ryan because he was sitting right down there at the end of the table here. I said, this is going to help a lot. If we can get this through to people that this is not getting high, it's just that three milligrams, and I think they do three and five milligrams, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, the drinks, it just relaxes you to a point you just don't get all whipped up. And it's much better for me anyway. Because back in the day, I tried to take some, you know, antidepressants and things like that. Never worked anywhere near this well. Sure. I'm, I'm very serious. I had that crooked drink, three milligrams, and it was just, and I didn't even expect it. It just, I was all of a sudden, and, you know, Sean, we don't know each other all that well, but it's really rare that I'm in a good mood. <laughs> so, you know, it might, that might be one of the problems that I have, you know. Sure. No, um, it's great. I don't know, uh... <clears throat> How many people have gotten into it in regards to what cannabis actually does when it interacts with your body, but sure. it is a multivitamin. <clears throat> yeah. Um, a lot of people are astonished when they take CBD or THC for the first time for some specific ailment. Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my goodness, this stuff actually works. And my uh, reaction is usually if you were iron deficient or calcium deficient for the better part of your life and you started taking supplements, you would feel better. Mm -hmm. And this is no different. See, that's wonderful. How did you get involved in the whole thing? Um, I've been a recreational user since probably 1997. Um, what were you, like 10? Uh, no, 19 at the time. I'm 43. All right, you don't look that old. Because I, I was going to say, that. 
Hitting the pipe has been good for you. <laughs> yeah. The hitting inverse, the pipe. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's preface that with marijuana pipe. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's true. They, yes. they said we were going to have a president in here today. He walks in in a pair of, like, cargo shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. He's like, what's happening, everybody? I was like, that's the president I want of the Weed Association. Right. right? Okay, what's your actual title? So I was I – was, I wasn't even elected. I was asked to be the president of the Minnesota Hemp Growers Co-op by um, a gentleman named Jim Erickson, who's been very active in politics for 50 plus years here in the city. So, um, you know, my background, I, I, was, um, I was working for a global manufacturer based out of Germany. Um, I was a recreational user. Uh, my company was very progressive and didn't have a drug policy. So... I continued to um, medicate, uh, but during COVID, um, I started a little side hustle for some friends and family on getting them CBD products at a reasonable price. Um, and then uh, I was let go during COVID, and I just kind of went all in on it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not a brand; um, I'm a maker. So we like to we like to manufacture and help other small brands and farmers. So that was the value proposition that I brought to the industry. I simply create for other people. Is there a lot of growing going on in the state of Minnesota? There was. Um, I thought so, yeah. Yeah, there, there was. Um, there was a huge green rush, if you will, in 2019. It plateaued 2020, completely tanked in 21, 22. Oh, sure. But that was pre-edible bill. So once the edible bill passed, the industry in Minnesota was completely revitalized. I mean, we went from just having standard non-intoxicating CBD products that were very niche for those wellness seekers. 80% um, of our customers are over the age of 60. Doesn't surprise me at all. But then, uh, all. yeah, with the edible bill drop, um, of course, it was completely revitalized, um, you know. Now the recreational users, the, the cannabis curious, we're starting to engage, and yeah, that's you know where we are now. And, and you were at the signing, right? I was. With so you did you meet uh, Jesse Ventura then? I've actually met Jesse a couple times. Um, the first time I met him, we were both testifying, I believe, in the Senate Health Committee. Uh, second time I met him, um, we got to sit down for about 45 minutes and talk all things cannabis at uh, Jim Erickson's. Um, anniversary party here this summer um and then yeah i actually will be uh meeting with his team here in the uh coming future that's cool yeah. I, I use a product called you betcha yes i know uh ben lipkin and uh, neil uh from carpet Dam. you betcha very well that's fantastic I, and I, i'm not endorsing i don't have i, I just like it i for all the uh, edibles I've tried. That is the one where I take a half of one before I go to bed. I sleep through the night every single night. I wake up refreshed. So how does the how does it go from being grown in a field outside of Mankato to an edible that I take before I go to bed at night? What's the process? Okay, so bear with me here. Oh um, no, this might be oh, yeah, no. just the layman's terms. Yeah, yeah please, yeah. and not yeah. too detailed. Yeah, oh yeah. my god, do, do they make it right here in Minnesota? Yeah, you absolutely can. So you you pick a plant. Um, and you extract it, and you're extracting it using, let's just say we're using carbon dioxide, CO2. And what that does is it basically pulls out the oils. Um, and once you have the oils, you have your, you have your batter. Um, you, can, uh, you can isolate, uh, you can clean up, but ultimately you, um, yeah, you grow it, you extract it, uh, you have your ingredients, and then you can make whatever you want. Now there, when we're when we're talking about delta nine THC and low dose edibles, uh, there is some other processes involved, but I don't want to overcomplicate it. Sure, thank you for that. <laughs> and what about like the big thing I've seen trending, and that's actually when I'd reached out to you saying, "Oh, how cute is the logo?" Um, is the is <laughs> the um, the drinks? That's a big popular thing now. Like I'm going to a brewery for a Taylor or Swift trivia night on Thursday and they're doing exclusively drinks that are infused. What's the new, like, what are, what do you have to be aware of with that? Um, well, first off, uh, we had drinks around back in 2019, 2020. Um, I believe, uh, 
Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to try to remember the name of the brewery, but the brewery here locally was making CBD seltzers, and okay. they received a cease and desist oh, really? from the health department based on the fact that you can't put cannabinoids in food and beverages. Well, what the law did is we said once you put food uh, or cannabinoids in food and beverage, it's no longer food and beverage. So that's how we made it mm. legal. Mm. There you go. Um, so, yeah, um, basically every microbrew in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area jumped on this train um what do we need to be aware yeah of, like if of I, beverages as a whole yeah like okay if i i'm somebody who i've had good experience with weed and i've had terrible experience with weed like i just need a small amount to be just fine so i'm kind of nervous to take on a new thing i mean when i do any edibles it's like a half of a half of a half as you should and so if i'm gonna down a whole drink <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to down a whole drink, like what, what do I need to know going into that? Like which, which acronym, like CBD, THC, and like how much? Sure. So that's a very loaded question, but let, let's just say that you're a completely new user and you have yeah. absolutely zero experience. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a good baseline. Uh, CBD inherently is not intoxicating. However, you are going to have some sort of effects, um, but they would be calming, <clears throat> you know, pure effects. Yeah. Now, when we're talking THC, obviously, that's intoxicating. When I run into a new user, I say, take half of a half, and you can always take more. Yeah. You can never take less. Mm -hmm. That's so so true. So with these two and a half milligrams, I think those two and a half milligram beverages are perfect for those new users. But at the same time, until you understand the, like, until you've done it several times over a period, like, a day yeah like sometimes it takes an hour to affect some people sometimes it takes two hours to affect people so low and slow until you know how your body handles it because again it is a medicinal product but we get a lot of recreational relief out of it Um, someone Mm. like me i could drink you know three 10 milligram sodas right now um and i would not be as affected as someone. I would, like, I would yeah. lose my mind. Yeah. I would you bring like, some with you? Uh, I do. I did bring some. So, yeah. um, I love this guy. Yeah. Uh, I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, and this is a question that just came from Wendy. She, uh, she texted into the show, and I actually had this question as well, because I took a half of a half of a half while I was ice fishing up on Lake of the Woods, and I ended up on a bench for a full day not being able to move my arms and legs because really? it just blew my mind yeah but she has a question which is is there information about making edibles the dosage uh ratios available so that a person has better control of the dosage and i think you just kind of explained that yeah i mean if you're buying a product it should absolutely say what that dosage is but just because it says it on the package you need to go to the certificate of analysis all products are required to have a QR code to access the product information. There, there is a certified lab that tells you what is in this product. Refer to that. Do not refer to what's on the label. Mm-hmm. The other thing is to comment on the half of the half of the half of the half. You know, what was that base potency? Yeah. Was it was it a five yeah. milligram? Yeah. yeah. Did they acquire it six months ago or a year ago where it was a hundred milligrams? Because mm-hmm. we need to understand like before um, this new bill dropped, or before the edible bill dropped, I should say, there was an unregulated market to where people were putting out 100, 500 milligram edibles. Absolutely. Sure. And, Absolutely. and that's something that I wouldn't even touch. I mean, yeah. the, the biggest dose that I would take in a single serving would be 20, 25 milligrams. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I was just going to ask you that, so it was kind of a coincidence. I had a friend several years ago that had been in a very, very serious car accident. And they, and he went through doctors and all the rest of it. He didn't just try, you know, setting it up for himself. But he literally has to do 500 milligrams a day. Otherwise, he's in agony. And I can, I can appreciate that. Now, God. when you're stretching it out over the day, you know, right. that, that's yeah, a little that's bit different. different, right? Yes, you're absolutely so, right. So you'd be taking, like, maybe 25 milligram dosage every, every 45 minutes. And mm-hmm. what you're trying to do is yep. you're just trying to prolong it, but... Yep. But you also develop a tolerance. I like to tell people if you're trying it for the first time, start low and slow and stay mm-hmm. low and slow because eventually you're going to be like me and you're going to need to take more. And I'm lucky. I make the stuff. I don't have to worry about paying for it, right? <laughs> so I do. <laughs> See, that's nice. We're, we're friends now, though. So <laughs> there you go. You don't. No, because I, I, to sleep, I do 50 milligrams. Wow. 
That's impressive. Yeah, 50 milligrams <laughs> wow. to sleep. Now, do you get up at night and you're like, oh, woof? Uh, yes. Okay. Because I do have to get up and pee once in a while. Okay. And I'm like, what world am I in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we, I get that from some people that aren't used to the effects. They'll right. take They'll take THC to... Um, to sleep, and they'll say, "Well, I woke up in the in the middle of the night, and I felt intoxicated." Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yes, yeah, you, you will. <laughs> yeah. You absolutely will. I, I I just think it's terrific. We finally kind of awakened to the, and it's kind of interesting how you guys got this done, and going all the way back to the beginning of getting this done, because there was so much money in alcohol. I didn't think that would ever get done because alcohol doesn't want THC around. Mm. Um, the alcohol industry. I'm yeah, so it's like most things. They needed time to understand what the market would bear so they could reposition themselves. Yeah, And now right, that they've done right. that, they jump behind it full force. I mean, the yep. anheuser Bushes of the world are investing in mm-hmm. uh, THC Smart. products. I mean, like I mentioned, almost every single microbrew in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area has jumped on this, you know, windfall. I think it's I think it's terrific though because of the the I wish a lot of people that I see on TV would take THC and just calm the hell down. Sure. Yeah. About that Sean, <laughs> is there data that shows after a state legalizes, uh, are there people that move from being drinkers to cannabis users? Is there is there hard because when cannabis was legalized here or at least the edibles, I thought to myself, well, I'm just going to quit drinking and just take small doses of edibles. Sure. Right. And I did that for about three weeks, and I was like, eh, I kind of like beer i'm a beer guy yeah you know so i went yep. back to drinking beer and is is there data that shows that after it's legalized that more people move over to using cannabis as compared to drinking i'm sure there is but i unfortunately cannot cite anything specific mm-hmm. um but we do know that the use is more responsible than people would think and yeah. assume i mean we get, you can, what do they say, speculators or... Yep, you only do it in front of the kids and at school functions. That's the only time go. you do it. Yeah, yes. It works for me. Yeah, but I mean, um, you know, a lot of the rhetoric coming out in the opposition is, well, look at what happened in Colorado. You know, traffic yeah, deaths yeah. went up, this yep. went up, this went up. And it's like, well, I can make statistics say anything, but at the end of the day, you know, no, that's not true, mm-hmm. right? Um, we're, we're seeing less um, uh, adolescent use of drugs and alcohol Good. after legalization. We're seeing Good. less um, overdoses. We're seeing uh, less opioid issues. We're seeing less traffic issues. So, Do you think that any sports reporter like, say, Judd Zolgad should ever do THC? I mean, I just, let me think about that. Oh, he just popped up on the screen. How did that? <laughs> Hi, everybody. What's going on? <laughs> We're talking THC. We're just 50 milligrams, baby, to put this boy to sleep. What do you think? I think that's very fair. I think but, it's fair, and I think it's down, about time. Take down this bear. But Sean was right. It's like, oh, it's 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a fire drill, Tom would be wandering yeah. the streets. I'll be right out. Don't worry. About We're crawling thing. tonight. Just give me, was it that two and two? Now, this is, I think, an important question because maybe it's just me, but I can do the chewables. But like, you know, this this right here, what I have here, Yep. Uh, you, you can chew these, you, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, the, I, I, I smoked pot a couple of times, never cared for that. Inhaling smoke was just, I, I'm not a big, a big fan of that. But I, I just, the one thing that I have noticed, and I don't know why this is, there are certain gummies, the chewables, right? Uh, the little gummy things. Those are, I think, 10 milligrams as well. They give me nightmares. Why would that be? Is there a like, sugar content with it? or what? Why would that happen? I, I don't know, I guess. Because um, it doesn't happen with the, the chewables or the their little capsules. You can I get those in Florida, as a matter of fact, when I'm down there. They're fine. But those specific gummies that they sell give me nightmares, and I don't know why. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's some ingredient that your body doesn't agree with. But, yeah. I mean... I mean, I don't want to burst your bubble, but um, uh, a friend of mine actually reminded me this yesterday when we were talking about our consumption, and, and THC actually inhibits sleep. It doesn't promote sleep. Really? Um, and in fact, you're, you don't necessarily reach REM 
stage that easily. I can see that. So, I yeah. mean, I, I very rarely dream. Um, but at the end of the day, um, if you are having, you know, nightmares, I mean, number, I want to say number one, if you're using THC and you have some sort of recollection of your, your dreams or your nightmares, mm-hmm. that's a positive. But I would say that, um, yeah, it, it ha- I would proffer that it's probably more of a food allergy or an ingredient issue yeah that you're probably true that is probably but true. i am not a doctor i have no credentials to comment on that well the other thing you have to understand is having nightmares when you work in you know, like radio or podcasting you're, you're gonna have nightmares for christ's sake is it that I mean, awful yeah you know, look at these <laughs> you know what i'm saying Oh, all roads lead back. <laughs> wow. Judd's getting a big laugh out of that one. Forced to that. stare at us all the time. All the time. To I mean, stare at all you. Day. It has nothing to do with the gummies. It has everything to do with his uh, coworkers. That is so weird, though, because I do dream a lot, and I shouldn't be dreaming as much on THC. Well, I guess if if you're just micro dosing now, fifty milligrams is is a healthy dose. It is a healthy. And dose. if you're only taking it at night, you know maybe there's something to say for that. Which I am. I only okay. take it at night. Okay. Maybe I should, you think I should maybe spread it out through the last five hours of my day? Depends. I mean, what are you trying to achieve in in the hours leading up to, you know, to sleep? Well, if I wake up at four in the morning, it ain't good, I'll tell you that. So you, so you what, you need to be up at three or you want to sleep till five? No, I definitely want to sleep till about 530. Okay. <clears throat> which I can most days, but no, I, I, and honestly, Sean, it, it's just, it's done so much for me. I got an edge to me. There's no question. I understand that. And my wife has made that very clear to me over the last 42 years. It, it's your tone, right? It's in your tone. It's in my tone. And the fact, I, apparently people think I have very scary eyes for some reason. I don't know what the hell that's about. Yeah, I get that a lot, too. Well, Sean, on our first day, Tom said this. Shut up, or I am going to stab you. That was day one number one. See, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. maybe that's that was the a, problem. That was orientation. I just love the way Sean looks at me like, oh, shit. <laughs> no, actually, I'm trying to figure out what the issue is. I mean, you're yeah, just yeah. managing expectations. Uh, exactly. Like, if, if you find yourself stabbed, this is probably why. <laughs> I explained it at I mean, the beginning. This is why you're bleeding out on the floor. We do have to take a break, but you can stay for a while longer, I hope. Yeah, absolutely. Judd, do you have some questions about THC? I uh, Sure. Sure I do. Of course I, I do. I <laughs> kind of assumed you probably would. So we'll get Judd and Sean will schmooze right after this. It's Tommy B for our new advertiser, Niemeyer Trailer Sales. It's been a part of Minnesota since 1965. The name says it all, by the way. They are family. If you want to take your passion on the road and make memories camping wherever you want, no motors but pulled trailer RVs, go to Niemeyer Trailer Sales. Father Jim Sr. started the business, and now brother and sister team Tim and Lisa handle Albertville with Jim Jr. at the helm in Elko New Market. The best name in non-motorized RVs with great deals on the best brands like Rockwood and Northwood. Niemeyer Trailer Sales truly outservices their competition with personal employees, often, as a matter of fact, sons and daughters of this third-generation family-owned business, who simply do what they say they will do every time because their names are on the building. And with a huge selection and RV service pros, you will leave satisfied no matter what you're looking for. They take care of every memory maker, I mean customer, that comes in. Their Albertville or Elko Newmarket location. Head to N-I-E-M-E-Y-E-R-S dot com and put your passion on the road. Niemeyer Trailer Sales. The new Tom Bernard Morning Show is proud to have partners like North American Banking Company, Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and attorney and advertiser Dave Bielke. I've been advertising on Tom Bernard shows for years. I like Tom, not just because he's a good guy, but because the ads I run on his show bring me new clients that are hurt at work and need legal help. Tommy B works for me. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner we are back ladies and gentlemen sean weber in studio i grabbed the paper because i want to make sure i give you the right title president of hemp growers co-op sean weber's in studio oh see i want to i know your name but president of hemp growers co-op minnesota hemp growers co-op well see there's no minnesota on there see they dropped the ball on me no we wanted to have higher expectations Mm -hmm. that's your next goal the president of the united states going national right sean weber whole thing sean President of the United States Hemp Corps. Should we have stood up when you came in? Should we be saluting you? Da, 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 da. Play a little. Okay, Judd, we're handing the pot over to you. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, Sean, my question is this. For a person like me who has been uh, throughout the course of my life m- mostly a beer guy, what would be, where would be the place to start? What would be the most lo- logical place for me to start? Not just as far as the amount I take, but how I consume it. Well, um, this is like just my take. Um, yeah. You're the president, man. <laughs> yeah, we're still You're the president. You. you are the man. president. Just make decisions. This is, just take. No, this is like the take I'm of the president. Patronized here. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, if, if, you, if you're a beer drinker, yeah. I would... I would go ahead and try one of those uh, beverages. There's there's yep. even hop water out there, so they have mm. non-alcoholic beer with THC. And go ahead and use the lowest potency available, so, two and a half to three milligrams. So I know you're involved in a couple. Like, what's a brand that we would like that you would trust to? You wouldn't have to think twice about. So um, I'm just gonna plug myself. Yeah. Uh, Crested River. Um, we've been manufacturing. Uh, beverages since January. Um, uh, I launched a soda line that was higher potency because everything that was on the market was for the new cannabis curious user. Uh Um, I'm sorry, but they tasted like crap. I'm not a white claw (laughs) drinker. I don't like sparkling water and the flavor profiles were blah. So we launched orange pop grape pop oh, um like grape. like tahitian grape, treat uh-huh. um, um sprite nice. mellow yellow so where we, do we get this i will bring some up to you after this what interview. I mean, can i buy can yeah I so buy from your right yeah, from your back you can you can go to our website but we're also in a number of uh locations around the twin cities we have a store finder on our website uh, two of my favorite is a natrium wellness in st louis park um, off of Excelsior and Grand, and oh, then uh, and Legacy Glassworks in in Uptown. Um, Mike and Mel at Natrium, and Josh at Legacy. Uh, they're huge advocates for the industry, and they do things right. They support local. Are liquor stores going after this product? Liquor stores, they're they're already Very in a number smart. of liquor stores, um, and I believe the the new bill uh, formally allows any and all liquor stores and bars to carry both drinks and edibles. Phenomenal. But right. um, but so mine are higher potency, but I did just release, and that's how uh, Britt and I just connected. Um, we launched a lower potency called Minnesota, as in soda. S-O-D-A. S-O-D-A. Ah! And the way you spell it is M-I-N-I. Yeah, like a mini soda. So our, soda. our typical yeah. drinks were one pint, you know, 10 milligrams THC with some CBD and CBG in it. So we went back to the traditional 12 ounce. When I'm holding it in my hand, I'm like, this is a mini soda. I'm like, that's a cool name. I'm going to go with it. Um, Those are at five milligrams, maybe still a little bit higher for the first time user, but two and a half to five milligrams first time. um, It's going to, um, you know, at least give you an idea of what you're going to experience. And then if you check out some of these micro brews, um, you know, you can get some hop water, you can get the Arnie Palmers, uh, but a majority of those are the very light, sparkling, zero-calorie beverages. Okay, now Judd and I, uh, shoulder to shoulder on something here, and we need to get some advice from you. Uh, Judd and I are watching a Twins game, and they're going to go to the bullpen. So how much before they go to the bullpen should I start downing THC so I'm not extremely pissed off? At our horrible bowl. So what we need to do is we need to get you off the edibles and beverages, and we need to get you inhaling because there you're going to get. It's right away, baby. It's right away. You're going to get your immediate effects. I mean, you're, 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 Just mainline it. You need to mainline it, yeah. I mean, with, you need to understand with edibles and beverages, you are ingesting them. And so yes. I, they're just not being absorbed into the blood. They're being absorbed through the digestive system and then into the system. Whereas um, if you're inhaling, you know, it's just like anything. Because I'll tell, I could show you a few text messages back and forth between Judd and me during. It twin depends games. on the pitcher, Tom. It so does, if, sure. if it's Pagan, you just go <laughs> inhale as much as you possibly can. <laughs> if it's Duran, you're like, okay, you know what? No, I don't need to. Just a little bit. But that's what it is. Based on which pitcher, which godforsaken relief pitcher is coming in, <laughs> exactly how you approach the THC consumption. 
Well, I've been I a like Twins, this. I've been a Twins fan all my life. I was oh, fortunate enough to go to Game Six in '91. Oh. Um, but I will say without a doubt, if you're not doing bong hits before a Twins game this year, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the Tom Bernard Show guarantee. <laughs> we got to have Sean back more. This is working for me is all I have to say. I'm learning how to sleep, learning how to watch the Twins. That's a great sales pitch, Sean. <laughs> it really is. You, you should partner with the Twins and say, if you aren't doing a bong hit before Twins games in 2023, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. And the Twins can sponsor it. It'll be perfect. Be Done. Great. Done. The seventh inning bong hit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. I really do. Because, uh, like I said, I've got a little bit of an edge to me, which I didn't even know until uh, maybe 50 years ago. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, I just I love the talk here, and I, I think. Well, I shouldn't say I think, Sean. What do you think? Are people still frightened of this product? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we saw that just with the opposition to the bill. Um, uh, it's it's. I mean, we're dealing with 100 years of stigma and propaganda. Sure. Um, we're not going to change that overnight, but we've done a lot in the last five years in the state of Minnesota. It's, it's fascinating. Um, and some of these corporations and some of these, you know, uh, v- virtue signalers, they just need to, you know, drink a cup of shut the F up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there was, I, there, were, there, was, there was one testifier. He testified in almost every committee, and he was for a, a, uh, uh, an organization, and he was citing statistics um, about how detrimental it is going to be to their industry. Um, last week, or maybe even earlier this week, a national study was released that basically contradicted everything that this prominent association head was saying. Um, and it has to do with, um, you know, truckers and, and mm-hmm. on the road safety and the DOT. And, and yeah, it's, we just need to be true to ourselves, but God knows that that doesn't happen nowadays. Well, I got to go when I go home tonight, I'll just, I'll, I'll grab a bottle of like old granddad and go, Catherine, should I do this or this? What do you think? Mm-hmm. You don't want to be around me if I drink whiskey. I will tell you that. Sure. I don't get too calm when I do that. Right. <laughs> I get a little edge to me. There's no doubt about that. And it isn't even the immediate effects. No. It's the, it's the lingering effects. No. It's, the, mm-hmm. it's, the, it's the effects right thereafter, but then the long-term effects. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are concerned about um, smoking marijuana and what it'll do to your lungs. Well, I'm sorry, but there's no carbon monoxide and tar and nicotine and right. marijuana smoke. right. That's what causes cancer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people that have um, partied a little too hard, and <laughs> they had to quit drinking or else they would die. Mm-hmm. In you, their you're staring <laughs> at one right now. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> so He's staring I, at two right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- actually three, but one of us hasn't quit drinking yeah, yet. Well, <laughs> it's actually four because your picture's up there. At it. So there you go. Fine. Uh, it all works out in the end, doesn't it? Oh, you, you it know, has to. I was uh, doing a little... Fingers inst- crossed, right? <laughs> yeah, I was doing a little Instagram stalking on you, Sean, and I saw that uh, you have kids, at least one, right? I have a, a daughter that'll turn 10 on Sunday. Oh, oh happy that's, birthday. That's awesome. When we were kids growing up, uh, we had some hippie friends that were family friends, and they would sprinkle a little bit of marijuana in the spaghetti sauce for their kids. Oh, yeah. And we would think that is wild. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe... But you fast forward now, and we're all in our 40s, and that side of the family, all of their kids are completely well-adjusted, incredibly creative, very successful in all of their fields. So how do you break the stigma when it comes to people with children who also use THC, and would you ever allow for your kids to use it, and at what age? Ooh, there's a lot there. Um, <laughs> so how, I mean, we need to we need to get people to understand that this is a vitamin. It is not a drug. I mean, I the cliche is they've been using it for 10,000s of years for wellness. Well, okay. Um, it interacts with the body like food and vitamins do. It It is not cocaine. It is not heroin, <laughs> even though they're, technically somewhat natural um it your body has an endocannabinoid system like i said if you're calcium deficient or iron deficient you can be endocannabinoid deficient because your body that produces cannabinoids is not producing enough really 
And so by consuming cannabis, not even specifically THC, you are taking those supplements that your body needs. Now, hmm. can you take too many? Sure. Maybe my... Like, here's, here's a good analogy. When I first started uh, promoting CBD, um, my mom has fibromyalgia. My really good friend had lupus. They were getting regular relief out of it. My sister, perfectly healthy woman, says, Sean, I don't get anything out of this. And I'm like, well, why would you? You're not stressed. Um, you're not inundated with pain. Um, you're, you're emotionally healthy. You're, you're, you're happy. You don't need this. You're not going to get anything out of it. Um, but there's people that aren't that lucky. It's the same people that have mild depression. And you look at someone that is always perpetually happy, you're like, what the hell are you on? Well, they have the right chemical balance. The other person doesn't. Right. Mm -hmm. The cannabis helps you provide that balance, achieve homeostasis. Um, that's, that's the baseline of the endocannabinoid system. It takes all of your systems within your body and it marries them together and it makes your body efficient and the best it could possibly be. So, um, so dosing like some flour and spaghetti sauce, we need to put that into context. It's not like spiking the Kool-Aid. Right. Yeah. I mean, so let's say they put the like a few grand. Yeah. They put a few grams in the spaghetti sauce. I mean, we're talking, there's probably micrograms mm -hmm. in there. I mean, so we're not saying that the kid's going to get even a one milligram serving. They're probably getting micrograms and that's a very healthy dose. Would I let my children consume marijuana, cannabis, THC? Absolutely. Um, I would not want them to um, use the uh, intoxicating substances until at least 18, if not, you know, 21. But at the same time, I tell them, no, they're going to try it anyways, right? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there you go. So I'm going to educate her, and I'm going to, you know, it's, my daughter knows that I consume. It's referred to as mm -hmm. medicine, right. and and it was right. and it was actually a visit to my uh, cousin Sarah out in Northern California when I visited her um, place where she cultivates, and it was everywhere, all over their yard, in their house, their process, and in their house. She has two little girls, they're twins, and they thought it was normal. They weren't interested in it, but they knew that it was inherently good. It was mm -hmm. a medicine. They can't touch it. Just like you can't take mom and dad's medicine out of the medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a plant. It's a freaking plant. Mm -hmm. It is indeed. No, Judd's only got another three minutes, so I want to get the five of us. Do you have one one pot, one THC story that you, you don't tell a lot, but it's a great... Because I happen to have a good one thanks to my buddy norm it was very very funny at the time so judd because you got to go in a couple minutes do you have yeah. one thc story that you enjoy telling not really no no i've i've <laughs> got some beer sex. stories Lying. i've got some beer stories from uh the, how about heroin you have any heroin hey, stories? come on be no, honest yeah. you have no, any heroin no cocaine, stories heroin now speed and acid i mean i could go on all day no speed and acid got a lot done you know, that day didn't you put sergeant peppers on drop some acid as one does with diamonds i mean come on so no thc story though mm -mm. all right Rudy, how about you? Your uh, I favorite. Was, I was in San Francisco at a wedding, and the night before the wedding, it was me, the bride, the groom, a couple of people in the party. We all went down to this cliff right on the ocean. The moon was out. It was, it was beautiful. We're all just sitting there, and a friend of mine said, hey, do you want to take a hit? And I was like, nah, it's not really my thing. And she goes, well, maybe you just haven't found your strand. Because I wasn't a big smoker either. And then my husband, Jeff, gave me this strand, and now I smoke this all the time. It's super relaxing. It's, 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 it works for me. And I was like... Well, when you put it like that, why not? I took one hit, and about 90 seconds later, I was clinging onto the ground going, we're all going to fall into the ocean! We're all going to fall! There you yeah, go. It was my strand. There you have it. Great story. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go next, the two of you? Uh, Sean, you can go first. Well, uh, I... Um, <laughs> I feel like you have a, quite a few stories. I don't remember any of my stories. You know. uh, I, I don't know. Um, do I have any good stories i i can't think of one All right. um well i i well i'll, I'll judd didn't have one either so do you know do you know what a dab is that sounds familiar what so a dab a is little dab concentrated yeah a, a dab is a concentrated <laughs> cannabis um so when i say that you process it you're taking you're extracting it it's you're taking it from being a a 20 plant 
to an 80% glob of tar. Um, people smoke it. The first time that I ever took a dab, it was probably 10 years ago. And so I'd have been 33 at the time. Um, within seconds, I regretted it because um, <laughs> I couldn't breathe. I was coughing hysterically. Ah, perfect. And, and I just injected my body with about 300 milligrams <laughs> straight to the brain. That sounds oh terrible. Um, it, it, was, Jesus. it was intense. It was, I was very paranoid, um, but I slept like a baby. Yeah, I bet. And, and I didn't have any stress for about a week. <laughs> That's wonderful. So it's a just great story. a terrible twenty four hours, but yeah. then from there it was it was a bad four hours. Okay. That That's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So Judd, you have to go, unfortunately. I do. Because I, I want to tell I will... I'll tell you my story at some other date because you'll be gone for my story. All right. It's a good Talk one. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, Thanks, Judd. Judd. Judd Zolgad. Judd Zolgad. Judd. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Score North, ladies and gentlemen, Judd Zolgad with us. Okay, Britt. Okay, so my favorite memory of being high, I was with my friend Michelle. We were 18. We were hanging out at our my parents' house in Egan, and we got really high, and we asked the neighbor. She had two kids. We said, can we use your trampoline? And so we spent, we thought, hours jumping, you know, just like jumping around on the trampoline. Actually, Michelle ended up rolling her ankle and still trying to jump, and we get off, and it had been like, 10 minutes tops <laughs> and it was just one of those moments like where like years. yeah and then i remember my brother had gone to dairy queen and we were both like how can we hide being hide and my friend michelle's like this is what we'll do we'll act like we can't talk just because we'll keep eating <laughs> so i just at some point my mom even has this memory where i was just sitting there with my tongue against the ice cream being like uh, uh. <laughs> and we got away from it just because we got away with it just because we were so quirky as people that my mom didn't think anything of it but I was, there you it was go so much fun just a blast it's a good time very quickly this is a very quick story i have a friend norm collins was his name he's no longer with us unfortunately but uh, 1969, I think it was, um, Norm had a brand new blue Ford Maverick. Now, not the current Ford Maverick, which is a, an SUV. It was the old, you remember what Ford Mavericks used to look like back in the day. Mm -hmm. not, not a great looking car, but, you know, that's, matter of fact, this is a very important part of it because it didn't even have electric windows. You had to roll the window down Which is by really hand. hard to look cool while you're doing yeah. that, by the way. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> So we're at the A&W up on Minnehaha Boulevard. You know where that is, right? Mm -hmm. Just right by the park there. There's, a, I think the a and is still there, actually. But we're in the A&W parking lot, and we're hitting the pot. Yeah. Right? We're having a, having a little geef in, in the car. <laughs> yeah, two marijuanas or three marijuanas. Well, we, <laughs> we had so much that you couldn't see into the car. Yeah, apparently. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We could see out, but apparently you couldn't see in because there was so much smoke. It was in the like car. the thriller music video yes, when exactly. you open the window. Yeah, yeah, you call that hot boxing. Hot boxing? Okay. Well, so I'm in the passenger seat. He's in the driver's seat. And I look over his shoulder and go, oh, man, we got a problem. He goes, what's the matter? I said, there's a cop coming right at us. Oh, no. He's walking right over to the car. This is a, you know, fully uniformed police officer, all the rest of it. He comes over, taps on the window with his nightstick, and Norm rolls the window down by hand, so it takes a little bit yeah. to get it down. <laughs> yep. And this huge puff of smoke goes out the window, and the cop is like, oh, for Christ's sake, this is wonderful. He goes, what do you boys think you're doing? And there was a long pause, and Norm looks up at the cop and says, it's too cold, man, and rolls the window back up. <laughs> and the cop started laughing and walked away. I, like, oh, I will beautiful. never forget it. That that's is like beautiful. That's such a Minnesota story. <laughs> it really is. Like, it's too it? cold out to deal with this. <laughs> too yep. cold to get arrested. It's Leave a, me alone. Oh, it's a buzzkill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actual oxygen coming in is not ideal. God, I will never forget that. That cop started laughing so damn hard, he just went, oh, Christ, whatever. He just walked away. And it was fine because nobody got hurt, right? As long as you guys weren't driving, yeah. He I'm didn't, was not driving. He was sitting there in a parking lot, so Perfect. that's good. At the A&W. Oh, my God. A&W tastes pretty good, actually, after you've been hitting the pipe. Oh, my oh, God. A&W feels, it tastes good sober. <laughs> that's true, too, yes. I love these conversations because you don't hear these conversations many places, and I think you should hear them more. 
I think it's just terrific the fact that we found another way. I'm I'm serious. That that crooked that I had the other day. I'm gonna I'm gonna love trying your stuff as well. And I can order that right from your factory in the future. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, you and can go right to that? our website. Uh, we're at criver.cc or crestedriver.com. Um, throw this out there cannabis community one word all caps um 35 percent off free shipping forever really i mean we're you know i don't want to toot my own horn but we're trying to <laughs> we're trying to not only break the stigma but i mean i like making money but i it's also a good thing. but i also understand that this is a long game here like i'm all about customers for life mm-hmm. you're all about quality you know, I'm not trying to make a dollar today. I'm trying to make sure that everybody gets what they need at a very fair price, and we'll re- we'll be able to stick around for a long time. A sustainable yeah. business model <clears throat> does not include greed. So we we offer very ethical pricing, and and a lot of people are turned off by shipping charges. So we just we say, nah, yeah. we're not going to do that. Wow, that makes another great pot story. And I heard this from one of the uh, Secret Service agents. <laughs> that Richard Nixon was, I don't know where he was, but he's flying back into New York. He was out of the country. I don't know why he didn't go back to D.C., but he flew into New York. He's the president of the United States at the time. And so he's flying, and he flies into New York, and the second he gets off the plane, another private jet, off that jet gets Louis Armstrong, the legendary trumpet player. I mean, Louis Armstrong was a great talent, right? And so he's talking to Louis, and they both got a couple of, you know, he's getting... Nixon's got his guys carrying his luggage, but Louie's got two suitcases, right? Yeah. And so Nixon says to Louis Armstrong, and I've checked this out, by the way, this did happen. He says to Louis Armstrong, well, you know, I don't have to go through security. I'm the president of the United States, so why don't you just walk through with me so you don't have to mess with all that stuff. It was just a pain in the ass. Louis Armstrong revealed years later, both suitcases were full of pot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Got the jazz lettuce. Oh, he's got like the 25 pounds lettuce. of pot. <laughs> like, and the president of the United States, come on in, you drug addict. All right, let's, go. let's do this. <laughs> so it just makes you wonder what would have happened to Louis Armstrong had he gone through security. Right? Yeah, well, exactly. Because if they open that up, you got some problems. Because that was 1971, I think they were talking about. 70, 71, something like that. I, I mean, my God, you're, you're rolling the dice taking two... Not one, but two suitcases full of pot across the Atlantic Ocean here, into New York City. Here, yeah. I'm having panic attacks wondering if I left a nail <laughs> file somewhere. <laughs> and this mofo's rolling in with two suitcases of weed. We'll just call them 20 pounds, 10 pounds a piece. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, oh yeah. That's, yeah, that's not holding, that's trafficking. That's life in prison? <laughs> well, God forbid it used to be. Um, the great thing about that is I saw him first tell that story on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. That's beautiful. And the greatest part is he goes, oh, so welcome to the airport with the prison. And, the, and he's got that great <laughs> voice. Oh, my God. God, what a great. We, I wonder if you could find that. We, I, I probably got to try to locate that. That would be fun to listen to again. That would be. Uh, you got uh, 15 more minutes? Absolutely. Okay, we've got Absolutely. to take a couple of minute break. We'll be right back and wrap up the entire show. Sean Weber, president of Hemp Growers Co-op is with us. I love this conversation because a lot of people still have a lot of fear about things like that. There are some people that still think it's very illegal, you know. Very illegal and very bad. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They absolutely do think that. And it, it's it been oh, about 55 years for me, so I'm okay. I'm good to go. <laughs> you look Jesus. great, Tom. For I, me, you know. Yeah, and it's nice, too, that you, don't, like, because there was a time, I'm sure, if you were, when you didn't have this option or if you had brought this up, you'd be in big trouble. So it's kind of nice that... Oh, you know, there might be a little... I might not be the clearest thinking individual sometimes because of things that happened to me in my life, like getting stabbed, Yeah. you know. So think think of it that way. So I've never been shot, but I've been stabbed three times, once in the hand, once in the foot, and once in the stomach. We'll keep you on your 50 milligrams. How about that? You think about that, though, how... Because booze would make it worse, you, not better. Yeah, thins out your blood. Yeah. And it gets me really pissed off. And really pissed <laughs> off. Yeah. Oh, tequila. You don't want me near tequila. I don't know what the hell's in tequila. Same. What is that called again? Mescaline? Is it mes- mescal cactus or what is it well, in tequila? There's mescal and there's agave. <clears throat> oh, agave. That's right. Yeah. There you go. All right. We'll take a break. Be right back in a couple minutes. We'll wrap things up with Sean right after this. 
This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live at TomBernardShow.com or on the Tom Bernard Show app. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Brittany was just talking to Sean about, uh, about Jesse Ventura. And I was thinking maybe one of these days I should read. I have not talked to Jesse now in about 20 years. When was he governor again? Well, we looked it up the other day. Yeah, 99, because he was elected in 98, started in 99, and he was out in 2004, I believe. Well, it's been about 19 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesse and I used to be very, very good friends, and then toward the end, we weren't. (laughs) And I haven't talked to him now in like 20 years, but once in a while, I see him, because somebody will ask him about that, and he says every time, well, we can get together again once he apologizes. So... (laughs) We for we as a group formally Love apologize, this. and we are trying to manifest him on the show. Oh, I'm sure Jesse would come on the show. That'd I mean, be so he doesn't fun. Doesn't hate my guts. So I we know. Just don't get along. I know. It'd be fun to have him on. Oh, Jesse's a very good guest because yeah. he never shuts up. I It'd mean, you could sit here for two hours and never get a word in anyway. Perfect. God, what a what a man. He's a character. <laughs> One of the things about my life, I will tell you, is the fact, and Catherine used to love it, too, because I used to be a power lifter back in the day, so we got together with people like Jesse Ventura and a lot of professional wrestlers and stuff like that, and my wife, Catherine, had gotten in an argument with every one of them, and it was just hilarious. Matter of fact, remember the Hawkster, Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors? You remember them, don't you? Yes. Through you, I know. I mean, like, I've never met them, but I've talked about them (laughs) quite a bit. You've never met the Road Warriors? (laughs) I've been mortified. Wonderful. <laughs> Knowing those guys was a thrill. Yeah. Yeah, you over there, settle down, we'll come over. So Catherine would go toe to toe with them? Oh, God, yeah. They got in an argument about uh, Mike Tyson. Remember the rape charges? What was that woman's name again? I forgot. Was that Robin? Robin Givens. Robin Givens. Is that who it was? God. So they're Rudy's sitting there. memory today is on point. Now, both my wife and Jesse are talking in very loud voices because, not Jesse, I'm sorry. I didn't mean Jesse. I <laughs> meant. The road warriors. The road warriors. But, you know, Animal wasn't there, only Hawk. But they're, listen, you got to understand something. We comes into the room, and she ain't, didn't have no underwear on. What? How would you know that? <laughs> like, right? what? What are you talking about? So they got in such an argument that Jesse, I keep calling him Jesse. No, it wasn't Jesse, because mm-hmm. we've been talking about Jesse. But Hawk reaches into his pocket, pulls out a sock that's full of pennies. Because he used it as a club. Right? And you have to have that on you at all times. Oh, he did. <laughs> because if you were a road warrior, people would come up and challenge you to a fight all the time. Oh, those guys got challenged to fights all the time. It was re- It's like, why would you do that? You're going to get killed, for Christ's sake. Right, sin. yeah. So he takes out his sap, that homemade sap, a sock with a bunch of pennies in it. goes, you're just driving me nuts. You drive me nuts. And he hits himself over the head with it. And pennies go every direction. It was at Manny's. The old man, he's back in the old, you know, when it was up there on, on Nicollet Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those pennies went everywhere. I'm thinking, oh, geez, nice life. Oh, I gotta my go. God. Catherine's stirring the pot, though. And she's, know. like, just keeping dead eye, I'm sure, on oh, him. Like, like, you're such you're, an idiot. You're ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. There's no doubt about um, it. We have people to ask some questions. Excellent. Um, Love listeners. to hear it. Okay, Sean. This is from <clears throat> Jeff. Would you be able to ask what the difference is between Delta 8, Delta 9, and Delta 10 TC or THC is? Yeah, so Delta 9 is what we have known and grown to love as THC. Uh, Delta 8 and Delta 10 do exist naturally in the plant, however, in very minuscule amounts. And because the legislation only specifically called out Delta 9, people much smarter than me we're able to figure out how to synthesize Delta-8 and Delta-10 um, to uh, manufacture larger amounts for intoxicating products. But at the end of the day, um, they're very similar. Delta-9 is the baseline. Delta-8 and Delta-10 are a little bit less potent, and they give you a little bit either um, relaxing or energetic effects. Awesome. That's a good so, yeah. thing. Thank you. Okay. Here's another one. This is from Ken. If each can has five milligrams uh, dose, how does it affect me if I do multiple multiple cans like I do with beer? Uh, you're just consuming more. So it'd be like I, I equate a can at two and a half or five milligrams mm-hmm. like a gummy. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So, you know, if you have a can, you had a gummy. 
If you're going to have a second can, you are now taking a second gummy. Mm -hmm. uh, brace yourself accordingly. Awesome. And then I have one. What? Let's talk about the average cost uh, to purchase the infused drinks. What are we talking here? Um, right now, they're they're pretty expensive. I do know that Trail Magic, uh, Minneapolis Cider Company, they have one of the lower priced beverages. I think they're around like three fifty a can. Um, uh, most of them are closer to like eight nine dollars a can. Dang. Um, I mean, I personally feel like if you're paying more than five dollars. Um, it's just not worth it because at that point, just go get some gummies, um, <laughs> right, under, understand right. who you're buying it from. But, uh, yeah, um, th that's my answer. Um, Eric, you kind of, or Eric wrote in, you kind of touched on this, Sean, but I'm going to hit it up again. This is formally, what is the labeling slash identifying requirements and our production requirements to ensure that people not wanting these chemicals do not receive it accidentally? So that's actually one of our concerns uh, that we talked uh, with allowing these uh, microbrewers with manufacturing um, THC products and cannabinoid products. We don't want cross-contamination. If yeah. you're drinking a THC beverage, we don't want alcohol in it. If you're drinking alcohol, you don't want THC in it. Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, moving forward, there is really no standardized processes and procedures but they need to be developed um, if you're looking at the certificate of analysis you're going to understand what the potency is and and making sure that it doesn't have any heavy metals pesticides residual solvents all the nasty shit stuff sorry no shit's um, good um, you're fine. fine you're fine <laughs> but um but, I mean, if he's specifically saying, I want to make sure that there's no alcohol in this beverage, there's no standard for that yet. And oh, and, and vice versa. Really? So if, if I'm a micro uh, brew producing a THC product and then I switch over to alcohol, right now there's no standard for them to verify that there's no THC in that alcohol. Really? Um, and, you know, we, we can get into a little bit of uh, controversy here, but if you don't have processes and procedures to ensure that there's no cross-contamination why should you be able to have dual manufacturing on a single line you should use separate manufacturing lines there's there's a lot of issues they of course would need to invest a lot more in capital equipment to maintain their current you know production mm -hmm. but with with some tests you can eliminate all that and you just need to put your best foot forward so right now the only mandatory test is for potency heavy metals pesticides and residual solvents but in regards to cross-contamination uh there's nothing required at this time all right let's see we just got a new one from joe uh they want you to bring up the uh what was the website your product uh again they want you to mention that one joe, uh, from louisville last crestedriver.com and then our new brand is called minisoda m-i-n-i-s-o-d-a <laughs> dot cc not dot com dot cc and then um any thoughts or do you guys do any of the lotions or creams um at all yeah we have a uh, we have a full line we do um lotions salves salve sticks bath salts all that kind of good stuff um let's see this one we would already touched on is there any information about making edibles available so that a person has a better control of the dosage we talked about that and what if you wanted control, complete control of your dosage, what route would you go? So if you want complete control over your dosage, I would buy some oil drops. Mm -hmm. um, look, at the, look at the potency uh, certificate, and then you can figure out, you know, a drop equals this much. And this is what I'm putting in my food or in my, um, my ingredient batch. But there's plenty of recipes out there. And in fact, the only difference between making a batch of cookies and making a batch of weed cookies or gummies and weed gummies is just that THC ingredient. That's it. Um, but because of the control over raw ingredients, nobody can possess more than 50 milligrams, right? So if you can find a product out there, a bottle of oil with 50 milligrams in it, that's what you're going to be limited to in your in your recipe. 
Awesome. Those are about most of our questions. I mean, we keep getting more in. People are asking a lot of the same stuff, but as they get answered. Sure. Well, it's one of the questions, hey, Britt, you want to get high? Yeah, of course I it was. I knew it. Typical. And I kept writing, sure. Not doing anything. Sean, you got to come back more often because I think this is very, very educational for people, first of all. A lot of people are still quite afraid of dealing with THC. Yes. So I think the more we talk about it and having you in studio to talk about it, it's very, very safe. It's very well manufactured now, correct? Correct. Very nice control over it and everything. So any l final tip you have? Final tip. Like I said, low and slow. Yep, um, there you go. You know, uh, if, if you find yourself in a position of you took too much or you think you're dying, don't call 911. They don't care. <laughs> don't go to the hospital. <laughs> they can't do anything for you. No. And you're not going to die anyway. No, you're it's a matter of time. Anyways. It's a matter of time, right? So what I can suggest is to mitigate what you're going through, drink some water, relax, just go with it. And if you have some CBD or access to CBD, take some CBD. And that's it. But you're not going to die. It's going to be fine. That's wonderful. I'll close with this. I'll just ask this question. Yes, we do offer balance. Uh, we're going to have Sean in. And then... We're going to find a guy to show up who's a raging alcoholic because they're a little balanced. This would be outstanding. I would, <laughs> I think I would I, show up for I this. I think we have some mutual friends that we could go ahead and bring <laughs> yeah, in for that one. Yeah, right? Well, Sean, honestly, what a great, great time we had talking to you about this. Very educational. I think any time you could take even a little bit of fear away from someone, it's a good thing. Because i I got to be honest with you, I don't know what the hell I would have done the last, I guess, 10 years without it. I'd have never gotten any. I was. I didn't get any sleep literally for about thirty years. I'm convinced I probably wouldn't be alive if I haven't been a pothead. Yeah, you might be right. That, <laughs> I might be there with you. Actually, that is not an endorsement, though. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, right. pal. Appreciate it. Okay.